Okay, it looks like we have a quorum. Uh, Kathy, you can start the recording and I'll call it to order. Just a second, I just wanna confirm that we're ready to record, be just a second. Anybody get dinner? <laughs> I had a piece of celery and a glass of water. This meeting is being recorded. And you got another bag of those? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'd like to call to order the Whatcom County Council meeting for August 5th, 2020. And uh, could you please call the roll? Rudd Brown? Rudd Brown? Here. Barry Buchanan? Here. Tyler Bird? Here. Todd Donovan? Here. Ben Ellenboss? Here. Carol Fracy? Here. Kathy Kirshner? Kathy Kirshner? Okay, thank you. Uh, we have all council members present, but with the exception of council, uh, council uh, she just showed up. I think you can read, ask. Kathy Kirshner. Well, I'm pretty sure she's here. Um, I see her in the list. It, she may be trying to connect to audio. Yeah, I, I do too. Okay, well, let's proceed. Um, council member, Sid, or council member, Sidhu, uh, executive Sidhu, I would like to turn to you. Do you have an executive report for us this evening? Yes. All right. Hi, uh, good evening council. Uh, uh, first of all, I just wanted to make a suggestion that uh, we should still do the Pledge of Allegiance. I think that uh, in initially we kind of suspended that because we were learning about this online uh, uh, Zoom meetings and go to meetings and things. I think that's a great tradition to start our meetings uh, uh, especially council meetings. And I would suggest that uh, to the chair, uh, maybe figure out some time, some way uh, to do that, that would be great. Okay, so besides that, I just wanted to uh, uh, report that uh, as we discussed earlier, and for the public knowledge as well, that we are working on the next biennium budget. We have uh, had several meetings with different department heads, and uh, we are following the instructions uh, uh, and the goals we had uh, uh, previously, previously discussed uh, with each department. And I think it will take us uh, probably four to six weeks to get it in shape. And I know that uh, as uh, council is uh, taking a summer break, uh, by the time you guys come back from summer break, uh, we'll have uh, uh, some kind of product ready uh, to, to, to work with you, uh, hopefully, uh, by that time frame. But the second thing I just wanted to report uh, the council that uh, our work with the Regional Economic Partnership to put out uh, uh, the uh, money for our local small businesses is going very well. The applications have been received and committees have been made. And uh, we are uh, definitely consulting with uh, uh, small city mayors uh, because that's where we are making a bigger impact in the sense that because of uh, our uh, decision to pool our money, uh, uh, I was just talking to Scott Kordheis that uh, we are 
probably will be able to give four times as much money as they have pulled into the pool uh, for their business assistance. Uh, it may be the same formula for rest of the uh, cities or not, but uh, it's definitely uh, uh, helping uh, people, uh, businesses in the in un unincorporated area, as well as the small cities. In addition to that, Bellingham is uh, laying out extra money from their share or their budget in addition to the uh, CARES Act dollars for uh, downtown partnership, as well as fair haven businesses, in addition to what we are doing. On the COVID response, as uh, you heard earlier uh, from um, uh, Erica, that uh, we, will, we are working on a plan uh, after our successful uh, uh, low barrier uh, uh, drive-in testing. We are working on a mobile uh, testing uh, program. Uh, we have chosen sites, uh, several school districts uh, up in the North County. I think that was the other area that uh, uh, the other places were more Bellingham centric. I think we heard from uh, uh, people in the North and East County uh, to be more accessible to them. And uh, we thought rather than them coming to us, we can go to them as well as uh, uh, our new system of uh, pre-registering will lower the cost uh, uh, because those four sessions have costed us uh, about $25,000, $26,000 each day, the four days we did, uh, for four or five days uh, we did. So we thought that uh, if we are able to uh, be more efficient and increase our testing, uh, so we will have that implemented fairly soon, and uh, and and we will report back the results uh, uh, even during the summer, or we can have some daily reports which we can share with the council even when you are on the break, or on August 25th when we have a special meeting, we'll be able to report uh, what is the outcome or what we learned. Uh, from our new model of uh, a low barrier shelter or low barrier testing. Uh, uh, the schools, uh, the governor has recommended that people should make local decisions. I think the health uh, officer has uh, given his recommendation. It is still up to the uh, individual boards of school districts to make further decisions. So this is very new, it happened this afternoon. Uh, so we will uh, hear more in next uh, uh, week or so, or maybe next couple of days, uh, what the individual decisions have been. Uh, I don't have anything other than that. And thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Executive. Is there any questions on any of that material? That... Okay. Uh, next up is uh, we have six sets of minutes to approve. Do I have a motion? Maybe be approved. Uh, Donovan moves, Frazee seconds. Oh. Any discussion, additions, deletions, or corrections to those minutes? Seeing none, please call the roll. Todd Donovan? Yes. Ben Ellenboss? Yes. Carol Frazee? Yes. Kathy Kirshner? Yes. Red Brown? Yes. Barry Buchanan? Yes. Tyler Bird? Yes. That passes unanimously. You're muted. Sorry about that. Uh, we're going to move into our public hearings. Um, okay, our first public hearing is uh, AB 2020-291. It's an ordinance regarding installation of stop signs on certain county roads. Do we have a staff report on this? Barry, uh, there's a caller of PW traffic staff, Mike Donahue, with his hand raised. Yeah, go ahead, uh, Public Works. You ready? Did you do something? Yeah, done. Yeah, this is Mike Donahue, traffic engineer for Whatcom County. If 
Public Works Department. And so uh, let me get this vest back on here, came off. So, so um, as far as the staff report, we're here just for questions on anything. There's not really a staff report. Um, okay, maybe you could tell us to just run by what county roads? Okay. Would you mind telling that? Sure. I have Jason here. He's pretty good. He's written it up right here. So uh, Jason Art, uh, Public Works Traffic Technician. Uh, this is Everson Goshen Road, southbound at East Smith Road. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other, any questions for staff before we open the hearing? If not, we, oh, go ahead, Mr. Bird. Yeah. Um, so if I understand it correctly, it was documented as being Smith or Everson Goshen and Hemi. And it should have been Everson Goshen and Smith where the roundabout is. Or... Yes, this is Jason again. Uh, the roundabout is actually gone now uh, as part of the project uh, to repave that portion of East Smith Road. Uh, the roundabout has been removed and an all-way stop uh, reinstalled um, as it was previous to 2015 when WashDOT used that as a detour route for a project on Mount Baker Highway. Um, when was the, the roundabout removed? Was that something we talked about at the council? The, the project was approved uh, earlier this year for construction, it was it was all part of one paving project. Okay. Is and, there a reason? Go ahead. And to answer your question, uh, there was just an error in the previous ordinance that authorized that stop sign, uh, and that's all we're correcting today. Okay. Why did we remove the roundabout? Uh, the main reason for removal was a increase in collisions. Uh, generally, we find that roundabouts lower collision rates. Here, we had a four times increase in property damage collisions and more than a two time increase in injury collisions. Yeah, that's pretty significant. The uh, but that that's only you only find out with this specific roundabout. Yes. Yes, that's correct. It was just this particular roundabout that was put in several years ago. Interesting. Okay. Thank you. Okay. With that, I will open the public hearing. And uh, staff, is there anyone that would like to speak? At this time, there are no hands raised. Okay. I'll close the public hearing and put it back to council. What's the wishes of the council? Move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve. Discussion. Sorry. Mr. Brown. Yeah. This is Everson Goshen Road and what is it, Smith Road? Is that correct? It's Everson Goshen and Smith, yes. So what's it going to cost us to rip out the uh, roundabout and replace it with stop signs. <laughs> Nothing, it's already done, right? Yeah, this is just a Scribner's error, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes, it's already completed right now. What, putting in the stop signs? Yes. Yeah. Uh, it was part of a previously approved uh, project that uh, council approved earlier this year to repave East Smith Road from Hannigan to Mount Baker Highway. Okay. Other discussion on the motion? Councilmember Bird. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of part of this, but uh, maybe not entirely. Um, I'm curious because it, it, it strikes me that we spent a, a significant amount of money putting the roundabout in and taking it out must have cost us a, a fair amount of money as well. Um, I didn't notice that in that document when it came through to repay that, that that included removing it. I'm not opposed to removing it. 
by any means, especially with the data as far as the number of, of accidents that occurred. But what I'm curious about is how, how can we use this situation so that as we look at future sites for roundabouts that we're not paying this, this significant amount of money to, to build them out, just to remove them later. I mean, what was unique about this spot that, that it increased the number of accidents versus decreasing them so that we can avoid this down the road, essentially? Uh, Jason with Public Works again. Uh, the county actually did not pay for this roundabout. Uh, the state put it in as a temporary detour route. It was never intended to be a permanent installation. Um, once it was complete, we decided that we would test it out and, and see if it worked well. Uh, we thought it would, would work and we decided to keep it. it. It was intended all along to go back to all-way stop once uh, the detour was no longer needed for the bridge project on Mount Baker Highway. So uh, the county as a whole did not pay anything for the installation of this. I appreciate that. Um, I, I'm thinking more we as taxpayers with spending wise, but I mean, when we look at that, have we done an analysis to determine what was unique about this and and how we'll use that data like to, to make sure that we, we pick spots in the future that are, are going to be right? So some of the characteristics of this is a large proportion of truck traffic. Uh, that a mini roundabout like this was never intended to handle on a long-term basis. Um, you know, when you add the amount of traffic that the detour took off of Mount Baker Highway, uh, an all-way stop would have been non-functional here, uh, given that amount of traffic. So the state had looked at several different options of installing a temporary signal or a roundabout. They chose a roundabout for this. Um, as part of the cost of their project. They needed a detour route. This was the only option. Um, and so that's sort of the reason why it was originally put in. Um, but a long-term solution is, is intersection improvements here. And it's um, on the new County Engineer Jim Karcher's six-year transportation improvement plan that you'll see next month. Uh, for intersection upgrades in the future. Other discussion on the motion? Please call the roll. An Ellen Boss? Ben Ellen Boss? Carol Fracy? Yes. Kathy Kirshner? Yes. Rudd Brown? Yes. Barry Buchanan? Yes. Tyler Bird? Yes. Todd Donovan? Yes. And I think Ben is back. Did I see Ben's back so you could pull him again? Ben Ellenboss? Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I my internet completely died, so I don't even know what we're voting on here. This is uh, item 2020-291 regarding the stop sign Everson Goshen at Smith. All instead of the roundabout. Yeah, apparently the roundabout is gone. It's already been removed. Right. Yeah. I've, I've heard that via social media. <laughs> um, uh, yes. Okay. That passes seven to zero. The next item is AB 2020-330 and it's a public hearing to review potential use of an application for a community development block grant CV1 consortium grant for addressing COVID-19 impacts in Whatcom County. Uh, does there, is there somebody that would from staff that could speak to this? Hi, Council. Tyler Schroeder, Deputy Executive. Uh, as we discussed earlier today in committee meeting, uh, this is a community development block grant uh, specific for COVID virus response. 
Uh, overall, Whatcom County has been awarded uh, through the Department of Commerce from federal funds uh, up to $472,000 uh, to if, if the council or if the county acts as a consortium um, associated with all of the small cities. In discussions with the small city mayors, it's likely that that will be the case. Uh, and there are a number of different uses uh, in the packet of which these funds could be utilized. After hearing the public hearing, uh, I'd be open to have some additional discussions with councils to hear priorities on what those uses could be. Uh, and there is a uh, list of those uses in uh, under what's called eligible activities guide uh, that's in the packet. But the um, action today that we're asking for is uh, Commerce requires a public hearing to get public input and then a motion of support for the executive to submit an application as, as uh, outlined in the, in the information council has. Okay, any questions for Tyler before we open the hearing? Okay, I'll open the public hearing. Uh, Kathy, do we have anyone uh, ready to speak? There are no hands raised. Oh, there is one hand raised, just a second. Second, Paul would pop up. Um, our first speaker is Paul Schistler. Um, just a second. Paul, go ahead. Thank you. Yes, um, Paul Schistler. I'm a community development planner living in Bellingham and I've, I've worked around the community development block grant funding for over 30 years. So I listened to the Council Finance Committee meeting this morning, and I was glad to hear the support for pursuing this funding. And I think it's a smart idea for the small cities to team up with the county as the lead agency to apply for the funding in September. <clears throat> so I wanted to thank the council for being nimble about, uh, about this opportunity to address some of the impacts of COVID. Um, as we all know, this pandemic's having a, well, really shining a spotlight on how close to the edge so many of us have been living paycheck to paycheck. <clears throat> and it bears repeating, and, and some in your audience might not know that over half of us who live and work in Whatcom County pay an un unaffordable amount for our home in rent, or if, if affordable is defined as 30% of our gross income for rent or mortgage plus basic utilities. So over half of us don't have an affordable home right now, leaving you know not enough for everything else we need to uh, survive. And, and childcare too, if, even if some of us were invited to come back to work, the childcare situation is so dire that um, it might be difficult or impossible for people to get back to earning a paycheck. So I, I wanted to, um, to uh, make one point actually has four sub points, but the point I'd like to make is that I'd like to encourage the county to think about what else you could do with this specialized funding if more of it becomes available. And I see maybe four ways that more of it might become available. Some cities and counties might not be as nimble as Whatcom County is and ready to apply for the uh, money that's been allocated to them. There's a table in your packet that shows the uh, counties and cities that could apply in September, but I suspect that many of them are so busy with so many other things that they, they won't be able to do that. So Department of Commerce may have extra funding to offer counties that have stepped up. So think about what else you could do if more money becomes available. And then we know that there's at least $20 million more of this kind of CDBG funding that Commerce will be distributing. They're waiting for, for direction from HUD about how to distribute that, but uh, that's, that's in somewhere just over the horizon. And then, and then I guess you already know that every year there's an opportunity for the county and the small cities to apply for this kind of funding, like you did in June for the Micro Enterprise Assistance Project and a Housing Rehab Project. And uh, like you have in the past to get uh, $750,000 to expand the East Whatcom Regional Resource Center. And a couple years back, a million dollars to help uh, expand the regional food hub that the Bellingham Food Bank operates on Ellis Street. So uh, we can also predict that there will be more CDBG in the future 
uh, if the federal budget increases, as I think it will for this kind of funding, there's a formula in place to distribute the money to all 50 states and over a thousand cities. So uh, uh, I'll, I'll wrap up by just saying I, I'd like to encourage the county to think about how it could use more of this kind of specialized funding for projects that principally benefit people with low to moderate income. Thank you. Is there, there anyone no, else? No other there, speakers? No other speakers, council member. Okay, we will close the public hearing. What's the wishes of the council? Council member Bird? No, I'll move approval. And then I, I do have a question. Second. Bird moves, Donovan seconds, discussion. Go ahead, Mr. Bird. Uh, Paul, if you're still listening, uh, thanks for, for the comments, we appreciate it. The uh, Tyler, this to, uh, how are we defining temporary housing facilities? Uh, Council Member, could you show me a reference of where you see that term? Well, you know, my problem right now is I'm probably looking at the right page number, which is the wrong page number, but um, I'm looking at page 696. Under summary statement or legal notice language. Up to approximately 500,000 may be available to Whatcom County to fund CDBG public services in emergency response or temporary housing facilities. Is that the HEN grant? Is that... Is, is that the, um, is, is that a different grant than what is here? And I don't know, uh, Kathy, if Paul Schisler is able, able to be unmuted, he may be able to have an answer to that question. I've unmuted him and he's welcome to speak. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. Yeah, so maybe I need to ask you a different question first. Is page 696 not what we're looking at right now? AB 2020-330? Councilman, I don't have numbered what's pages the, on What's the on title the of that document? One of the issues is you guys all get hard copies, council members get hard copies, and, and we use Legistar. So I don't have yeah, a, no. a page reference. Yeah, I, I use I don't I use the digital copy too. So it's the agenda bill file number AB two zero two zero dash three three zero. The actual file or page number, if I'm going by PDF pages, from the master agenda is seven oh seven. But the documented page number on the agenda is six ninety six. One second. What is the title of that document? It's a agenda bill master report file number AB 2020-330. And that's a, a July 28th file. It, in, in Legistar, it's one layer below the stuff we're looking at right now. I'm downloading the 700 page document. Well, actually, if you're in Legistar, Tyler um, Schroeder, and you're looking at the page, I think that you'd be popping up. If you click on AB 2020 it brings you to another set of files that includes AB 2020 Oh, okay. And so that document's in 330? I'm not sure, but I think that was the number that Mr. Bird was just saying. Councilmember Berg, what was the number in the agenda again? I, I truly apologize for the confusion. Yeah, no, it's no worries. The uh, the page number of the document in the agenda is six nine six. If I'm doing it via the PDF, the digital PDF, it's that I'm typing in a page number. It's seven oh seven for the full agenda with the committee and everything stuff. But it's it's the master agenda bill. And so, so you're referring to the, the notice that was um, in the paper uh, on and, and recognizing um, the, the public hearing today. Um, this is Dana Brown Davis. Um, so 
330 is the correct item. The, the title is Public Hearing to Review Potential Uses of an Application for a Community Development Block Grant CV1 Consortium Grant for Addressing COVID-19 Impacts in Whatcom County. And on the agenda bill sheet, the language under the summary statement includes the language that went into the public notice that was in the Bellingham Herald. And I believe that's what Tyler is referring to. Yeah, thanks, um, Dana. Uh, and so those were just general terms in regards to what the um, community development block grant could be used for. Um, that specific one of temporary housing, when I am looking at the information that is on um, the eligible guide for use, el eligible activities guide, um, my confusion is that it actually doesn't refer to temporary housing. And I don't think there was, an, uh, there was a, a perspective at this point that these dollars would be used for that point, for that, for that purpose. But I can do a little bit more research and, and give you an answer, Council Member Bruce. Okay, yeah, I appreciate that. The, uh, man, I picked the wrong page to ask about. <laughs> Dana, thanks for the help there. Um, if it is related to temporary housing, one of the things that I'm curious about is the Airbnbs and the, the short-term rentals. I know that there's some concern from community members about having short-term rentals in the neighborhood with, with people actually using them right now um, from out of state and out of area. The, I know that there's a significant concern from owners of those properties about being able to afford and continue paying their mortgages now that, that it's been six months, um, in some cases with no revenue. And so this is one of those opportunities where I think we might be able to help local community members and support kind of our, our local economy if we've used some funding for temporary housing to rent Airbnb units um, for individuals versus building them or, or other uh, options as an idea. So yes for ideas earlier. Yeah, no, that's great. And um, I think the term temporary housing is, is a little bit more aligned with the kind of the rental housing subsidies, uh, similar to the subsistence payments in which they allow for up to three months of individuals being paid for their for their rent if they're lower or or moderate income. I, I think that's uh, more in line with how these dollars uh, could be utilized, but your idea is a good one as well. Council Member Donovan. Uh, I'm mute, hang on. Um, okay, um, so I'm looking at the list at, at the um, eligible activities. First, actually procedurally, so do we need to dispose of the motion and then discuss what we might do with the funds or did you want to have the discussion of the funds? Because um, I mean, for one question, I don't know if um, Mr. Schroeder is looking at that list, but some of them are highlighted in beige and I didn't know what that meant on that list. But um, I mean, you mentioned childcare, that's an eligible use. I think that's a great idea. The substance payments um, is an eligible use. That's a great idea. Um, there was also um, rental assistance, even mortgage assistance in there. Um, but just so anyway, I, th those are the ones that jump out at, at me and, and food bank funding. Um, but do we, what's, how, how do we want to proceed in terms of we, we've got a motion um, and then the discussion about how to fund or do we do that simultaneously? I think that's a great question, Todd. And I'd, I'd ask Tyler, I mean, th this is kind of an odd, an oddly worded item to review potential uses of an application for what's I mean, the out what's the outcome of an approval we needed to have the public hearing to receive the money so we receive the money and then we have a discussion about how we use the money right exactly but what what would a motion to approve actually approve just to, just to, to, to receive the funds that's it we were going to take that motion of approval to uh, recognize the executive can submit the application to Department of Commerce. That's how, that's how we were going to interpret the approval. Executive Sadu. Yeah, I was going to just add that exactly what uh, Tyler is saying that you are approving for us to make an application. That's all. We, we have been allocated the money, but money does not come to us. They have allocated money to all the communities in whole Washington state. 
but you have to make an application, show your willingness that you're willing to take the money and work with it. So today we are just asking, please allow us to make the application. We make the application, money will come in September, but we can start planning right now what we can use it for. So we still have a lot of time and we will do some more research, but that is something work that council members can do and we can do to see what would be the better potential uses of this 474 or $472,000. And this is in addition to the uh, uh, CARES Act dollars we have received. This is additional money and the hood money we received uh, that was also an additional money. So we just want to, yes, we would like to see what are the best ways to use this money. Is that and clarifying? Another thing, sorry, another thing. We can use this money till 2022. This is uh, another thing I wanted you guys to know that uh, this is, we're not in a rush to, to spend this money. Uh, we will have time to plan for that. Mr. Schroeder. Yeah, and just to give a little bit of background on anticipated uses, um, it's, it's, it's pretty close to what Councilmember Donovan had laid out. Um, we are looking at discussing with Opportunity Council to help as a subrecipient um, to allocate the dollars. Uh, they do have, um, under the, the eligible activity guide, the whole list of public services. Um, Department of Commerce at this point needs an indication of which ones uh, we will be moving forward with, but you are able to move that as you move forward and, and allocate the dollars to different programs in that larger list. Um, as you see, there's more needs associated with it. So we, the Opportunity Council- okay, Is everybody clear to, then on what the motion is asking for? Motion is to ask for the money. I think Barry just froze. Yeah, I was feeling like you might have cut out right there when you made that comment. Um, seemed like you might have missed part of the conversation we were having. Tyler, go ahead and continue, please. So I was just going to say the Opportunity, Opportunity Council is already administering a subsistence payment program. Uh, which is for um, rent and mortgage payments for low and moderate income. Uh, we've been having discussions with the small cities about also including uh, utility payments uh, in that, and Greg Winter is looking into whether or not that could be accomplished. Um, there has been some discussion with David Webster at the Opportunity Council about coordinating with Bellingham on some additional child care services and longer term through 2022 to provide for that, that framework uh, beyond just the end of this year, uh, where the CARES Act dollars are going to go. Um, and then uh, I would say that those are the, the two um, kind of programs that we would anticipate applying for these dollars um, and, and just kind of looking for a head nod from council uh, that, 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 that seems like appropriate um, areas for us to, to move forward with. Councilmember Bird? Uh, Tyler, do we know how many? Uh rental units in the county or, or single family residents? No, not off the top of my head. Okay. Um, would Bellingham have at least a portion of that data with their kind of their rental registration program by chance? They likely would. You could look, use some assessor data as well to recognize which ones are single family and not, but I just don't know of a good resource where that information is available. Okay. Um, do we know by chance uh, what our, uh, what percentage of rents are late or not being paid? I, I've heard on a national level that they're calculating it. It's, it's between 30 and 40%, depending on the month. Yeah, I would say the Opportunity Council would probably have that number um, because they're a little bit more tied in directly to it because they've been helping pay for, for some of that rent. I haven't heard of a local number. Okay. Um, if we're using it for rental assistance, but one of the things I'm worried about is that if people, for as long as we've had this kind of eviction moratorium in place, if they haven't been paying the rent and it's a single family residence with you know one to four units or, or a handful of units that they have, even if it's more than that, if it's someone new that's you know 80% LTV on all of those, those homes, 
they're not going to be able to carry that loan very long if they don't have other income. Um, and the payments can be too high. So if that's the case, are we going to lose a substantial number of our rental units into foreclosure in the next 12 months because there aren't payments? Yeah, I think that would hurt our, our rental market significantly and, and the renters at the end of the day. So can we use this in a way that maybe homeowners or, or landlords that have a certain number of units can apply because their tenant can't hasn't been able to make rent. And so we can pay the homeowner on behalf of the tenant so the tenant can stay longer. But that way we're ensuring that it's going to the small landlords that aren't going to make it otherwise. I'm not sure down to the level of detail that, that you're going to, but I do know that um, it can be used for both rent protection and mortgage protection. So if it is rent of a single family residence, it is usually paid directly to the homeowner to pay for their purpose. So which is then keeping it in the rental instead of going into foreclosure. Okay. So when they do apply at least the check's not made out to the renter, it's made out That's to correct. The it goes, it goes to the it goes to the tenant, uh, it goes to the, the property owner. Okay, so I, I think that's beneficial. I, I've met a couple of people recently that weren't able to pay rent. They couldn't be evicted, but they just got to a point where there was too much tension between them and the landlord. And so they have moved out and moved in with family members because they can't get another place because they don't have the income. Um, I think it would be really helpful if we set up a program to actually communicate directly with small homeowner landlords so that they knew that this program was available to help them with renters that were having a hard time because they don't want to have to replace those people either or like replace renters and go through that cost. So, yeah, but that's kind of the anticipation is, is to uh, use these dollars for that purpose. I know the opportunity council with the subsistence pro program that they already have in place has more contacts than the County uh, with just kind of that in mind. And I think it's important to recognize that these dollars were, were more for the, the longer term and still, still a short term, but it's not like an October deadline. It's a 2022 deadline. And so um, if we kind of want to continue to show financial commitment to these programs, thinking that the, the, the economic issues and the, the ability to pay rent will be for a longer term, then I, that, that's kind of why it's important to continue to support those programs through 2022. Any other discussion on the motion? Ms. Kirshner. Hi. Um, uh, I uh, know that there are several um, residents that receive a Medicaid um, funding voucher for assisted living or long-term care support. And when they end up in that situation, um, the assisted living facility takes all of their Medicaid money, which is their social security, and they get $70 a month to spend on personal care <clears throat> and anything else that they might want other than their rent and their food and their medical supplies. Um, and a lot of these folks have been shut in their residents since March and haven't been able to access many of the community resources that they were accessing before. Um, you know, uh, charity type situations where they might get their um, toothpaste or something. So I'm wondering if some of this money, it seems like we're getting a lot of money and, you know, we're trying to figure out how to spend it. So I'm wondering if some of this money couldn't be set aside to um, give to those folks as their lives have definitely been impacted by the COVID crisis and they're trying to live on $70 a month. I mean, how do you even have a telephone and you know buy shampoo and toothpaste for 70 bucks a month? So it's just something to consider. Um, they would be long-term care, Medicaid recipients that um, could benefit from a little bit extra money since they can't get out and around. And their family members haven't 
you know, been able to visit them. Um, I'm sure that many rely on family members to bring and donate things to their care. So I just don't want to forget those folks. Thanks. Executive Sadu. Oh, I was going to say that's a great suggestion. <coughs> Sorry. I would suggest that uh, the council members, if you can reach out to in your own communities and find out more cases like that, uh, we can, like things like what Kathy said, could be just ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 can help a lot of people, a large number of people. They may not need a whole lot of money. So uh, the, our suggestion is that if you reach back to your constituents, and, and see what the needs are in your communities. We can work through small cities also. <clears throat> That's what we are planning to do, the Opportunity Council, because small cities express that they may not have a sub-recipient to actually distribute the money, where we don't take up that function of actually distributing ourselves. So we are looking at strengthening the distribution network also, because this is unprecedented otherwise, a lot of different charities were able to manage the regular stuff. So <clears throat> this is one of the discussion we are also having that, I, and I have suggested to the mayors also, that if they have an existing uh, uh, a nonprofit in their community and they would like to support and they are willing to take up this job, then we will actually use those uh, channels as well. At the same time, we'll work with the Opportunity Council to expand their reach into the rural areas, into unincorporated areas, even in the other cities. So any suggestions, you're most welcome to bring. There may be a lot of unique things, and there may be 100 people in the whole Whatcom County who have a unique position and need help. We would not know. Right? And we would really like that, uh, please bring up these things send us emails or whatever way you can work with, uh, let us know. We will put that in the, on the list. <coughs> Sorry. Mr. Allen Boss. So am I, am I hearing that we're gonna take this money and give it to people that need help or are we gonna take this money and build a, build a program that funds a person and something we'll have to sustain into the future? Or are we just taking it and giving it to help people now immediately? The first one there, council member, Ellen Buss. Uh, we're, we're taking this money and uh, providing it uh, through the Opportunity Council, likely, because they have a, uh, the organization set up to do it uh, to those that need help uh, for the things that they need help with. Did Barry freeze again? No. No, I, I, everybody else looked frozen. I didn't know what to do. Okay, do we have uh, any other discussion on the motion? I was gonna say senior services are one of the eligible uses. So the stuff Kathy was talking about would, would fit in there. Yep, exactly. Okay, uh, with no other discussion, please call the roll. Carol Frazee? Yes. Kathy Kirshner? Yes. Fred Brown? Yes. Barry Buchanan? Yes. Tyler Bird? Yes. Todd Donovan? Yes. Ben Ellen Bus. My kids always tell me I vote no, but I'm gonna vote yes. They say, Dad, you always vote no, but I don't, I'm voting yes. Okay, that passes unanimously. Uh, next up is open session. Um, is there anyone uh, to testify? Is there anybody with their hand raised? There are no hands raised at this time. Okay, I know phone calls coming in. Okay, uh, we will close then the open session and move on to the consent agenda. Yeah.
You're muted, Tyler. Okay. Thanks, Todd. Um, I'm going to move this in two pieces. Uh, the first one's going to be items AB2020-295, AB2020-302, AB2020-303, AB2020-305, AB2020-306, AB2020-311, AB2020-323, AB2020-325, AB2020-326. Those items passed a committee 3-0 with all committee members present. Just for clarity on our agenda today for the council of general, it's gonna be item um, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, skipping 10, 11, and 12. So what's not in there is number seven, 10, and one. And I still move approval all of those. Dana, was that clear enough? Yeah, I think so. Okay. It's items two, three, four, five, uh, six. Eight, nine, 11, eight, 12. Eight, nine, and skipping 10, and 11 and 12. You got it, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's the motion we have before us. Is there any discussion? Mr. Ellenbos. To summarize that, these are all the um, school funding ones. Is that, would that be a fair representation? No. No. Okay. No, this is an assortment of consent agenda items, Ben. So, right. Can you run down one more time which ones it is? It's one through eight. No, nope. two through six. Two through six. Eight, nine. Eight and nine. Eleven and twelve. Eleven and twelve. So eight, nine's the flood. Eight's the flood. Nine's the budget request mm, no i think you're on the other agenda item this is the consent you're right i was yeah and i think you lost your body and your nose sorry sorry i'm trying to read real quick Would everyone prefer if I ran through just one at a time or call them in the record one at a time? No, okay. No, we... Okay, go ahead, Dan. I'm caught up. I'm ready. Okay. Any other discussion on the motion? Okay, seeing none, please call the roll. Kathy Kirshner? Yes. Red Brown? Yes. Barry Buchanan? Yes. Tyler Bird? Yes. Todd Donovan? Yes. Ben Ellenboss? Yes. Carol Frazee? Yes. That passes unanimously. Okay, Mr. Bird, we can take these remainders one by one. Great, thank you, sir. Um, AB 2020-191. Request authorization for the county executive to enter into a contract amendment between Whatcom County and Washington State University to continue the jointly shared cost of faculty, or excuse me, cost for faculty positions and program support for Washington State University extension in the amount of $239,047 for a total amended contract amount of $2,238,323. $2,238,323. $2,238,323.90. This page is 404 through 409 of the packet. That passed in committee 201 with council members Kirshner and Brown in favor and council member Bird abstaining. Okay. And I move for approval. 
Okay, that's been moved for approval. Do we have a any discussion? Mr. Bird. So the reason I abstained on this it was, and I'm going to do so again tonight, actually on all three of these, I think, but it's just because right now with where we're at with finances and spending, I really want to be looking at the data and the outcomes for projects that we've been spending money on and making sure that it, it's accomplishing what we, we intended it to accomplish. And in the case where there's scenarios that it, they're typically in person that if we're going to fund them for another year that we have a plan for actually how to execute those moving forward so that we're not funding the money and, and not able to use it um, that's going to be sent later so we, I'm, I'm going to hold off on voting personally until i have that information and that was my my reason for abstaining thank you comes my rail and boss when I raise my hand like that, you can see the tree behind me. Um, does anyone know under one, under the line items on page 408, it says, you know, some of this is fairly clear cut 4-H county director uh, for family programs, water resources coordinator program. Does anybody know who the water resources coordinator is or who's facilitating that program? Would it be WSU or is it outsourced through the WID? Does anybody have any information on that? Councilmember uh, Kirchner. Oh, Mr. Sudhu, do you have? Yeah, I, I was going to say I'm not sure, but I think it's through the Water Conservation District, or Water Conservation District. I will verify that. Councilmember um, um, I know that uh, WSU used to do some work around Lake Whatcom. Could it be that, Ben? Uh, they used to do some education and uh, coordination around homeowners that wanted to do some mitigation projects. So, but yeah, maybe we should get clarification on it. <clears throat> <clears throat> Any other discussion? Yes, Mr. Allenbach. I look at it and generally I'm probably in favor of it, but I, I, I'm kind of surprised there isn't more information in here about, about it. Uh, a community horticulture program, $65,000. Like, I like horticulture. And I think spending money on it is a valid expense. Some people might not, but I would like more information to what a community horticulture program entails. Because um, I'm, I'm a farmer and I don't, I don't think I know just from that one sentence. Other discussion? Mr. Bird. Yeah, I do totally with Ben and I'm not a farmer, so that puts me even further away. I mean, I'm trying to go back to high school when we had one of those programs. Um, but I really feel like uh, that kind of data included in, in all of these things is is really important, not just for us, but for the community, because it, if people are looking at this, we want them to see what, what the results are and what's included and in, in what those programs look like. So I think it would be really beneficial for us to, to have that stuff kind of added into to any of these renewals and requests mm -hmm. in the future. But. Mr. Sudhu. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Why don't we do this? That, and I did talk about it last couple of years also, that when we do this, they should include their annual report with their budget request. That way we will know what programs they have done, what they have achieved. You know, that everybody we give money to, they should give us an annual report. And that goes for the nonprofits also. Uh, I think that is a great idea. And I would like council to consider that may, may not be in conjunction today right now, but some kind of policy on, on all this that when information comes or the next time grant or budget approval comes 
from any of these organizations, we should receive their past annual report. Even if they had provided three months ago, it should be included in here. Thank you. Mr. Ellenboss. On the first page, it talks about background and purpose and then funding amount and sources. And it talks about the horticulture program through the health department and public works. But then it says the funding source is the health department and public works. So I, I, I'm, I'm just kind of confused on the whole thing. And it seems like an awful lot of money to, I mean, each individual thing isn't a ton, but together it's 240 grand or whatever. And it, yeah, I'd like more information. Mr. Schroeder, do you have a, some info? Yeah, sure. Tyler Schroeder, Deputy Executive. Uh, earlier in committee, Michael Wallace from WSU Extension kind of walked through some of these details. Uh, there is $65,000 from the health department through the solid waste excise tax. And then there's $41,000 and $34 through the Strengthening Families Program, which is a grant from the health department. And then the rest of this is a budgeted item that we did last year for 2020 uh, and is uh, general fund dollars. Uh, the extension was going to bring forward this contract prior to COVID uh, because we were limiting the, um, the, the, the contracts on the agenda. Uh, it got postponed to now. Uh, and uh, Michael Wallace was able to walk through a couple of the, the details to the contract. As it relates to the natural resource, I don't know if individual if council members remember Sue Blake, who actually used to work for the council and then worked for WSU Extension. Uh, she was their natural resource uh, uh, individual that the natural resource program. Sue's now retired. And I think, um, I think that uh, Cheryl Niles has taken over that, that, that part through WSU Extension. Mr. Donovan. Yeah, Mr. Schroeder just covered some of what I was gonna say. I mean, th these are the folks over on Forest Street in that really ugly building. Um, what was it like 1104th street and that that it's our contribution to the wsu extension folks that are running the the 4-h program um the water resource educator is um since cheryl niles is is the person who's got that position um so i, I would urge people to support this council member yeah i i, I... <clears throat> I guess I'm, I don't really, I, I would like to think that horticulture is beneficial to the health of a family, but maybe there's, there's probably something, I, yeah, I, <laughs> you, you see what I'm getting at? Like, it feels like 65,000 might be better spent than if, if that's where the money's coming from, from for, for uh, strengthening families and a solid waste fund, it almost seems like it's not a direct line for me on how that is beneficial to those, those things. Mr. Donovan. I, I think they also administer this part of the SNAP program there uh, out of that facility. So that would be, um, I think we're right, the strengthening families and, and some of the health department links are there. Um, and that, that's an important program for our community. Mr. Bird. Yeah. Um, first, uh, executive to do, I think it's a wonderful idea attaching the, the annual report. Um, I'd love it if, if we could schedule these in a way where the renewal request is actually at the same meeting as the annual report or maybe the meeting right before so we have a chance to have that information ask questions see what they've done think over it for you know two weeks and then vote on the renewal um, and have it attached it that would be that would be wonderful um, thanks for for suggesting that as in regards to this um, this is it's one of the other things that I'm, I'm struggling with is like, we're all kind of like trying to guess off the cuff what's included and what's not and, and what's there and what's not. And yeah, I mean, this is such a thin request or a thin document for requesting you know, $239,000. Um, 
for a total of 2.2 million after that will be invested in this program over the years that it just seems like it, we, we should be giving it more merit and time to make sure that it's, it is effective that I mean, we shouldn't be assuming that it's working. And trust me, I, I love the idea of 4-H. I, I have to, I assume that it's a phenomenal program, but I still want to know that we're actually, we have a plan for how to have the kids working pre or post during COVID um, that we're touching the same number of kids that we were years ago, that um, the, the program is a, the same quality, that the same number of kids are, are making it into you know, post-secondary school because they have this on there and it, it's assisting them in their applications and their resumes and, and that the impact's the same. So is there any appetite for, for holding this item until we have the report? I mean, it's, it's not like they were already six months past, but. Councilmember Donovan, then Councilmember Frazee, then Councilmember Allenbach. I appreciate, I mean, I'd, I'd like to see annual reports, but um, I, I don't understand how we're all suddenly surprised that we don't know what the Washington State Extension does. Um, it, 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 it's an important program. It's something that we've been helping fund for years. Um, it's multiple programs. Um, I, I would be happy to see their annual report, but I would, I would hope that we don't uh, postpone this and, and, and punt on this. Ms. Frazee? So I was going to say the same thing. I think maybe they don't have as much in here because we, um, it's such a big part of our community. Maybe they have like, oh, it's just known that it's helpful for our community. Even when we did the farm tours last year or the year before, um, Henry Berlink was talking, you know, every, uh, just what they, the programs they have and how valuable they are. And I've heard it throughout our community. So, I'm going to support it because I think, um, yeah, like I said, I, throughout our community, it's 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 a valuable program, and I think it needs to continue. And maybe maybe it was just assumed that everyone knows about it now by now, and they just didn't put a lot of information in. That's what I'm thinking because I don't know why else they wouldn't put in more information. I, I seem to remember year after year that they came and presented in chambers. Uh, and maybe this is just an exception because of everything that's going on. Um, Mr. Allenbach? Yeah, I, <clears throat> don't, get, don't get me wrong here. These are all things that I generally support, um, but I, I put it in a framework of where we're at right now and um, what is and isn't Whatcom County Council's um, you know, lane. Um, I, I would probably be more apt if, if the line item said $239,000 to 4-H, I would probably just vote for it because I think 4-H is probably the best program out there for, for all kids, urban or rural. And um, I've personally put thousands of dollars into it. Um, but I look at it and it says $51,000 for 4-H and then $65,000 for a community horticulture program. And, and I'm sorry, I just, I have no idea what that is or, or what it does. And I do know what 4-H is and I do know what that does. So, um, like I said, I, I'd like more information. Ms. Frazee? This is probably out of my expertise, but when I did do the farm tour, when we were there, from what I remember hearing is that the horticulture program, they were working with different like raspberries to see which ones could go with less water and doing a lot of experimentation for our area. And I'm not sure if this is what it was for, but I know it was this program. So I think they're doing a lot of research too for specific um, horticulture in our area. Any more discussion on the motion? Okay, please call a roll. Fred Brown? Yes. Barry Buchanan? Yes. Tyler Bird? No. Todd Donovan? Yes. Ben Ellenboss? Just so it doesn't sound like I voted against 4-H, yes. 
Harold Frazee? Yes. Kathy Kirshner? Yes. That passes six to one with Councilmember Bird opposed. Uh, next item, sir. The uh, next item is AB 2020-307. Request authorization for the county executive to enter into a contract amendment between Whatcom County and Opportunity Council to administer the Washington State Department of Commerce, Housing, and Essential Needs Program in the amount of $608,211 for a total amended contract amount of $2,037,324. It's pages 527 through 537 in the packet. Um, that passed in committee 201, council members Brown and Kirshner in favor and, and council member Bird abstained. And I move for approval. Okay, we have that motion. Discussion? Council member Bird. Yeah, yeah, basically the same thing as last time. Um, I, I, I believe it's a good program, but I, I really, I need to start justifying that to myself, regardless of, of what the program is, I, I need to know that it's working. And so I, I would change from abstaining to voting no on the last one because I, I need to have that information and that it's effective. So I'm gonna actually vote no this time on this as well, because, it, um, and I'd happy to vote for it if once we have information from the data showing what, what the outcomes are too. So, but thanks. Other discussion? Seeing none, let's vote. Barry Buchanan? Yes. Tyler Bird? No. Todd Donovan? Yes. Ben Ellenboss? Yes. Carol Frazee? Yes. Kathy Kirshner? Yes. Red Brown? Yes. That passes six to one with council member bird opposed. Okay. Last on the consent agenda is AB 2020-324. Request authorization for the county executive to enter into a contract between Whatcom County and Northwest Youth Services to provide reimbursement for COVID-19 related operations and prevention expenditures in the amount of $53,791, pages 59 or 591 through 604 in your packet. I passed in committee 201 with council member Kirshner and Brown in favor and council member Bird. Um, holy cow, I got in the whole mood and I, I forgot the word. Abstain. Thank you. <laughs> One of those moments. Uh, yeah, so, and I still move. <laughs> Thanks, okay, thank you. Discussion on that motion? Uh, Ellen Boss won the tie. I would say my internet's faster, but it really isn't. Um, so this is, this is just funneling CARES Act dollars through the county to, um, youth housing and support services. Is that what we're doing here? This isn't coming out of the general fund. That, that's correct. Tyler Schroeder, Deputy Executive. It was uh, CARES Act local government dollars that we've been talking about lately uh, allocated for these types of organizations. And Deacon has uh, worked with a number of different organizations and they'll be uh, reimbursing for some of the costs that they've had that they've incurred over the, the COVID pandemic. So it, this, they came to us and asked for reimbursement with this. Is, is, there, is there a process that other groups, like I guess my question is, are we putting this out there to all the other groups so that they have an equal shot at some reimbursement as well? Uh, I would say yes. Um, as we've identified the buckets of spending for the CARES Act dollars that we've been having a lot of conversations with council members um, in the last few months, uh, once that's been kind of recognized, uh, our staff, especially the health department staff, has been reaching out to the community partners that we work with. Uh, there's a couple of others in the consent agenda that we already moved forward with. Opportunity Council was one. Catholic Community Housing was the other, I believe. And then this is 
uh, Northwest Youth Services. Uh, there are probably, I think Ann this morning said six or seven other contracts that would be moving forward. So we've been working with those agencies that we know and given everybody the opportunity to uh, come in and ask for reimbursement. Thanks, Tyler. Yep. Other discussion? Councilmember Bird, you have your hand. Yeah, this one's actually a little different. It's not about the data, it's about the HVAC system. The, I'm big on helping reimbursing the costs for this and, and helping people kind of keep going, but I just don't feel comfortable. I, I haven't seen anything that says that they've attached any kind of case spread to it traveling through an HVAC system. I, I, I don't. And I read it real, as much as I could real quickly of the articles uh, Schroeder sent over. Um, and it, I just don't, I don't feel very good about that one. Um, so it, that's why I'm voting no on this. Other discussion? Mr. Ellenbach. I, so I see other things in here other than the HVAC system. Do we know how much of it was spent on the HVAC system? I, it could have just been they changed some filters and it was 95 bucks, you know, like, um, I guess maybe don't throw the baby out with the bathwater there, Mr. Bird. Do we, do we know that? Did we get a breakdown on any of that or, or was this all 54,000 to upgrade their HVAC? It's the latter, my understanding. When they submitted the application or the, the process for reimbursement, uh, they had invoices for that 54000 And associated with the contract, they'll submit those invoices. We'll, we'll confirm that those expenditures happened and that it was COVID-related for additional filters, uh, which is similar to what we're doing for county buildings. Uh, we're, we're looking at how our HVAC systems are working. And I sent a follow-up email, or I'm sorry, Dana sent a follow-up email to council members from Rob Nye, our facilities manager, to kind of walk through it, um, to, to, to recognize that organizations have been looking at HVAC systems. Um, I, I don't dispute uh, council member Bird's questions about the le legitimacy. I, I think that, you know, th there could be both sides of the, of the coin on it and the perspective, but um, it does seem to be airborne, does seem like HVAC systems uh, and improvements for filtration do make sense as a precaution. Um, the county has been looking into it. And so for a nonprofit to apply for the same thing, we, we did see it as appropriate. And we confirmed with Commerce that we could reimburse for those purposes. Any more discussion, Mr. Brown? No, I'll just say that, we, you know, in, in situations like this, we've got people in high density situations. And, and this to me is just a logical thing to try and reduce the risk between people who are, are congregating in the same area. Mr. Bird? Yeah, the dollar amount is $10,000 is, is what was spent on that um, or line item for it. But uh, shorter, I mean, they guaranteed that they would re reimburse for that dollar amount or for that item. I didn't quite hear your question. So the, the state, you said, has given us the thumbs up that they will absolutely give us the money back for it. That was my indication from Ann Deacon this morning, that she had confirmed that, they, that we could reimburse for that purpose. And I do know that the county will get, re, I, I'm uh, fairly confident, very confident that if the county made those same improvements for COVID related purposes, we'll be submitting that for CARES um reimbursement i just want to point out we did the same thing at the uh, we have already done the same thing at the eoc for the same reason and, and we've done it at the bellingham high school executives to do yeah i was going to add that you know this COVID thing is very new and strange and we are learning as we go different organizations northwest youth People, they have their board of directors who approve these things and different organizations feel that this is important for them or for their organization because all the youth actually lives in that building, they're housed in that building. So 
I think it is very difficult if we have to question uh, all these little things and we have October 31st to spend all the money. If we don't, we don't get to keep it and we have to just return it back. I totally understand that uh, we should uh, scrutinize, but, uh, but our uh, uh, finance department uh, do look at these things and look at invoices and they verify with the commerce that it, is this a legitimate expense or not. Now, how we individually feel about it, uh, that's a different question. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, go ahead, Mr. Bird. If they, for some reason, didn't reimburse us, would we be kicking that back and, and we'd get the money back or pull it back because it wasn't reimbursable or, or are we going to eat it, hypothetically? If they indicated we can't reimbursement, then we wouldn't be able to pay the, the 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 entity the money. So that confirmation from Commerce would happen prior to us paying through this contract. So we're going to get the receipts. We're going to send it to Commerce. Commerce is going to give us thumb up, up. It's approved, and then we release the funding back, right? Because we don't have the funding yet. Okay. Okay. I thought we were giving it to them and then taking the receipts and filing after the fact. And I thought that was the process. So, um, okay. You all made a good argument. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Councilmember Ellenbach. Okay. Now I'm, I'm more torn on this than I was. So council or, uh, not council any, uh, Mr. Schroeder, uh, where do, where do we draw the line on this? So, you know, a lot of people congregate in a lot of buildings and they may need their um, HVAC upgrade as well. So is there a criteria? Does it have to be a nonprofit that currently has a contract with Whatcom County? Um, like where, where do we, where do, what's, what's the line that we draw on? I mean, could everybody just start flooding us with requests for upgrading their HVAC and we'll, do what we can or you know what I mean like where do we draw the line here yeah I would say that if any business or nonprofit that we've already recognized that we will be utilizing CARES Act dollars to support for either reimbursement of costs already there or some improvements if they come to us like a business that associated with the business grant and they say, hey, we've done HVAC improvements and we think we should be reimbursed for that. And the council's provided some guidance on what those programs are gonna be. Then, then yes, those entities would, we say that's a legitimate request. It was COVID related. It was needed to, for health precautions and we will reimburse you. Um, if it's an entity that, that isn't within those buckets that we've put into place, uh, then we we probably wouldn't work with them because we don't really have council authorization or kind of priority and direction to work with them. Uh, so that's a, as best as I can try to get to your your answer there, Council Member Ellen Boss. Anything else? Okay, please call the roll. Tyler Bird. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay still on this one. Todd Donovan? Yes. Van Ellenboss? No. Carol Frazee? Yes. Kathy Kirshner? Yes. Red Brown? Yes. Barry Buchanan? Yes. That passes five to one to one with council member Ellen Boss opposed and council member Bird abstains. Uh, now we move on to other items from finance. Um, the next item is AB 2020-211, request authorization for the county executive to enter into an interlocal agreement between Whatcom County and Nooksack Valley School District to provide behavioral health services in the amount of 120,000, it's page, excuse me, pages 27 through 52 in your packet. That was approved in committee three zero with all committee members in favor. And I so move. Discussion on this motion. Seeing none, please call the roll. 
Todd Donovan? Yes. Ben Ellenboss? Yes. Carol Frazee? Yes. Kathy Kirshner? Yes. Rod Brown? Yes. Barry Buchanan? Yes. Tyler Bird? Yes. That passes seven to zero. Thank you. The next item is AB 2020-220, request authorization for the county executive to enter into an interlocal agreement between Whatcom County and Linden School District to provide behavioral health services in the amount of $111,000, pages 53 through 78 in your packet. That was approved in committee 3-0, and I so move. Discussion. Please call the roll. Ben Ellenbass? Yes. Carol Frazee? Yes. Kathy Kirshner? Yes. Red Brown? Yes. Barry Buchanan? Yes. Tyler Bird? Yes. Todd Donovan? Yes. That passes unanimously. <clears throat> the next item is AB 2020-231. Request authorization for the county executive to enter into an interlocal agreement between Whatcom County and Blaine School District to provide behavioral health services in the amount of $131,400, pages 79 through 104 in the packet. That was approved in committee 3-0, and I so move. Okay, discussion on this motion. Please call the roll. Carol Frazee? Yes. Kathy Kirshner? Yes. Red Brown? Yes. Barry Buchanan? Yes. Tyler Bird? Yes. Todd Donovan? Yes. Ben Ellenbass? Yes. That passes seven to zero. The next item is AB 2020-235. Request authorization for the county executive to enter into an interlocal agreement between Whatcom County and Meridian School District to provide behavioral health services in the amount of $108,000, pages 105 through 128 in your packet. That was approved in community 3-0, and I so move. Discussion? Okay, let's vote. Kathy Kirshner? Yes. Fred Brown? Yes. Barry Buchanan? Yes. Tyler Bird? Yes. Todd Donovan? Yes. Ben Ellenboss? Yes. Carol Frazee? Yes. And that one passes unanimously. Okay. The next item is AB 2020-236. Request authorization for the county executive to enter into an interlocal agreement between Whatcom County and Ferndale School District to provide behavioral health services in the amount of 120,000, pages 129 through 154 in your packet. That was approved in committee 3-0 and I so move. Discussion. Let's call the roll. Red Brown. Yes. Barry Buchanan? Yes. Tyler Bird? Yes. Todd Donovan? Yes. Ben Ellenbass? Yes. Carol Frazee? Yes. Kathy Kirshner? Yes. Passes 7 0. The next item is AB 2020-237, request authorization for the county executive to enter into an interlocal agreement between Whatcom County and Bellingham School District 501 to provide behavioral health services in the amount of $138,000. It's pages 155 through 180 in your packet. It passed in committee 3-0 and I so move. Discussion on the motion. Please call the roll. Barry Buchanan? Yes. Tyler Bird? Yes. Todd Donovan? Yes. Ben Ellenbass? Yes. 
Carol Frazee? Yes. Kathy Kirshner? Yes. Red Brown? Yes. Passes 7 0. Red, it only took three and a half years, but I mean, you're finally got worn me down, and it's only 7 30. I'm feeling tired. The uh, sorry, ongoing joke evenings versus mornings, but all right, next item AB 2020 244. Request authorization for the county executive to enter into an interlocal agreement between Whatcom County and Mount Baker School District to provide behavioral health services in the amount of $108,000 pages 181 through 205 in your packet. And that was approved in committee three zero. I so move. Discussion on the motion. Please call the roll. Tyler Bird. Yes. Todd Donovan. Yes, there's only 10 ben. more to go. Ben Ellenboss. Yes. Carol Frazee. Yes. Kathy Kirshner. Yes. Rudd Brown? Yes. Barry Buchanan? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. The next item is AB 2020-309. Request authorization for the county executive to enter into a contract between the Whatcom County Flood Control Zone District and Reichert and Eve Engineering Inc. for engineering design services for the Ferndale Levy Improvement Project. Council acting as the Whatcom County Flood Control Zone District Board of Supervisors. Pages 206 through 265 in the packet. That was approved in committee 3-0 and I so move. Discussion on this motion. Okay, please call the roll. Todd Donovan? Yes. Ben Ellenbus? Yes. Carol Frazee? Yes. Kathy Kirshner? Kathy Kirshner? Yes. Rudd Brown? Yes. Barry Buchanan? Yes. Tyler Bird? Yes. Passes 7 0. Thank you. The next item is AB 2020 297, ordinance amending the 2020 Whatcom County budget request number 15 in the amount of $716,503. Pages 266 through 282 in your packet. That passed in committee 3-0, and I so move. Discussion on this motion. Council Member Frazee. I think we say this at every evening meeting, but um, we did have discussion throughout the entire day today. So if you want to go back and uh, listen to any of that. Um, so if it seems like we're just flying through things, it's because we've had robust discussions the entire day. Thank well, you, Thank you, Council Member. Three hours, I believe. Yes, on each one. Okay, Mr. Elmbos. Yeah, um, what was the number on this one again? Yeah, it's AB 2020-297. It's item number nine of the other finance items. It's page eight of your agenda. Discussion? Okay, please call the roll. Ben Ellenboss? No. Carol Frazee? Yes. Kathy Kirshner? Yes. Red Brown? Yes. Barry Buchanan? Yes. Tyler Bird? Yes. Todd Donovan? Yes. That passes six to one with Councilmember Allen Boss opposed. The next item is AB 2020-301, request authorization for the county executive to enter into an interlocal agreement between Whatcom County and Washington, and Washington Association of Sheriffs and Police Chiefs for the registered sex offender address verification program. 
in the amount of $139,263. It's pages 283 through 289 in your packet. And that was approved in committee 3-0. I so move. That motion is in front of us. Discussion? Seeing none, please call the roll. Carol Frazee? Yes. Kathy Kirshner? Yes. Fred Brown? Yes. Barry Buchanan? Yes. Tyler Bird? Yes. Todd Donovan? Yes. Ben Ellenboss? Yes. That motion passes unanimously. Next item is AB 2020-313, request authorization for the county executive to enter into an interlocal agreement amendment between Whatcom County and Washington State Department of Health to provide funding for the delivery of various public health programs and services in the amount of $408,842 for a total amended contract amount of $4,928,000 pages 290 through 319 in your packet. That was passed in committee 3-0 and I so move. Discussion on this motion. Okay, please call the roll. Kathy Kirshner? Yes. Rudd Brown? Yes. Barry Buchanan? Yes. Tyler Bird? Yes. Todd Donovan? Yes. Ben Ellenboss? No. Carol Frazee? Yes. Motion passes six to one with Councilmember Ellenboss opposed. The next item is AB 2020-315, request authorization for the county executive to enter into an interlocal agreement between Whatcom County and the Point Roberts Park and Recreation District. Number one, for use of Lighthouse Marine Park to establish a kayak program. It's pages 320 through 337 in your packet, and that was approved in committee 3-0. I so move. Okay, we have that motion, uh, discussion. Mr. Bird. I'm voting for this um, because I think it's a good program and I like that it gets people outside and helps them out. I like that it supports a, a business to rent the program um, that's running these kayaks out there, um, supports the economy to tourism and everything else. I feel like this is very similar in context uh, to the landowner out in Glacier that, that wanted us to waive their permitting or their, their docketing fee. I mean, another private business waiver of fees so that they could support the economy, but they were also doing a good thing for the community and the environment at the same time. Um, and it would have helped them. The fact that we're not charging rent to the kayaking program, and we're letting them use the space and store the, a, a trailer there essentially with their kayaks so it's easy for them to me it's, it's very similar and I am supportive of that um, at the end of the day but I thought I'd point it out so council member brown my understanding is that you can is they rent the kayaks for free so they're not actually I don't know what the revenue model is but they're not we're not sub as I, as I can tell them. We're not giving them free rent so they can charge people to use the kayaks. Mr. Donovan. It's funded through um, the lighthouse. I'm sorry, the uh, parks Point Roberts Parks and Recreation District. Um, so it's not our funds. But I, I and the thing Mr. Brewer was talking about. I thought we voted to not waive those fees. I wasn't trying. We did. You're right. We voted not to waive those, but yeah. This is not county money. So this is. Mr. Ellenbach. So basically, this is money that they would have voted in themselves in their park district. 
Mr. McFarland, is that right? Th that is correct. Uh, there, and there is no charge for uh, the rental or the use of the kayaks there. So the park district is entirely picking up the uh, cost of uh, the program as well as the equipment. Are there discussion? Okay, oh, Mr. Bird. Yeah, so ooh, we're paying for the we're paying for the kayaks as well within this program. Is that a separate budget item? I mean, we're not purchasing them, but are we 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 paying the, re the lease or a rental rate on those kayaks? No, in this particular instance, the kayaks belong to the park district. They're their property. Um, the county has nothing in there. Um, the kind of the quid pro quo is it's available for all Whatcom County residents as opposed to just the uh, residents within the park district. Okay, gotcha. If you can get there. If you can, yeah. Yeah, no kidding. You have to swim. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay, uh, please call the roll. Brown. Yes. Buchanan. Yes, Kathy, you're kind of quiet. I don't know what happened to your audio. Tyler Bird. Much better. Yes. Todd Donovan. Yes. Ben Ellenboss. Yes. Carol Frazee. Yes. Kathy Kirshner. Yes. Passes unanimously. The next item is AB 2020-317. Request authorization for the county executive to enter into an interlocal agreement between Whatcom County and Washington State Department of Commerce to provide resources to prevent, prepare for, and respond to the COVID-19 pandemic among individuals and families who are homeless or receiving homeless assistance in the amount of $494,112. It's pages 338 through 362 in your packet. That was approved in finance 3-0 with all committee members. In favor, and I so move. Discussion on the motion. Okay, call the roll, please. Barry Buchanan. Yes. Tyler Bird? Yep. Yes. Todd Donovan? Yes. Ben Ellenboss? Um, yes. Carol Frazee? Yes. Kathy Kirshner? Yes. Red Brown? Yes. That motion passes unanimously. Thank you. The next item is AB 2020-318. Request authorization for the county executive to enter into an interlocal agreement between Whatcom County and Fire Protection District Number 7 to cover the costs for students to attend the paramedic training program in the amount of $218,640. It's pages 363 through 374 in your packet, and that was approved to the one in committee with council members Brown and Kirshner in favor and council member for opposed. I move for approval. Discussion on the motion. Mr. Bird. Okay. Um, I mentioned this in committee, but it, for people who don't watch and are wondering why I'm voting against this, um, yeah, the reason I'm voting against it is because I feel like the program isn't structured. It, I feel like we could do a better job of structuring the program. Um, you know, we have a lot of people going to school right now. They're going to a four-year college or a two-year college, and they're racking up six figures or, or more in debt that they're now leaving and you know, hoping to get a great career, and that that education that they're paying for and that they're financing will get them a better position than if they hadn't. And in this situation, um, what we're doing is we're paying for the tuition for an individual to take the time off to go to a school and get trained while we pay them their full salary during the entire time and then when they complete that we give them a raise for completing the training i would much rather see that be that if we're going to pay their salary for them to take the course and pay for, for the curriculum that either they don't get a raise for doing it or that we do it in a context to 
we pay their salary, why they take the curriculum, and that we postpone the raise for a couple of years to offset the cost of the tuition so that they also have a vested interest in doing the education and are paying for a portion of it. That way they wouldn't have to pay directly out of pocket themselves. They would still get the raise, you know, two or three years down the road, but they've also covered a portion of that cost versus it being entirely covered by taxpayers. I think that that would be a win-win situation for everyone at that point. Um, and more in line with if, what the general community that's ending up having to pay for these kind of programs is experiencing themselves. So that's why I voted no on this one and the next two as well. Councilmember Ellen Boss. I'm going to say that there's some merit to what Councilmember Bird was saying, but I just want to point out. Um, mainly because I've experienced some of this training myself and it's not awesome. Um, and in your example you used, you talked about, you know, say you're, you work at an oil refinery and you want to get a master's degree to move up the chain of command or something, you pay for that yourself. Well, your degree doesn't really help um, anybody other than you. And I would argue that a paramedic, a firefighter who wants to become a paramedic, um, there's benefit to our community for them to be good. Um, and every aspect of what they do probably benefits our community. Um, so I, I hear what you're saying and I kind of was thinking along those lines as well. But at the end of the day, I don't think, it takes a special person to be a paramedic and it, it there's a lot, uh, you don't just become a paramedic and then make a ton of money and retire happy. I think there's a lot of emotional and um, physical and emotional toll that goes along with being a first responder. And so um, it's not just all about your career and promoting yourself when you, when you go to become a paramedic. So I'm speaking in favor of it. Mr. Bird, I saw your hand up. Yeah, um, I was. I, I, ben, I, I, I see what you're saying. Um, I would give another example, which is you, most organizations, and maybe in the county, I'm not sure, but they have programs in which they will cover a portion of your, will help you with tuition to go back to school as an employee, um, but they only cover a portion of it, and you have to go to school on your own time. And the reason that employers do that is because going to school and improving your skill set brings you back as a more efficient and, and talented employee to do so. And so it behooves them to assist you in that way because they're going to see those long-term returns from that as well. Um, I don't know what the job necessarily entails, but what I do know is that they told us today that there's a significant line of people who are applying for it that want in from around the county. And so that tells me that we're or would suggest to me that regardless of whether we paid for the tuition or not, we would have a lot of people lining up to do this program and that we don't necessarily need that, that portion of incentive. I'd be okay with it if it was a matter of like, hey, this person is now qualified to go out on, you know, with one other person to a call. But as far as I'm aware, we're still dispatching two fire engines and a paramedic to every single call. And so you're sending this person out with ample support staff um, to most calls that they address. And, and so I, I don't necessarily see the, the offset for cost there either. Um, yeah. I respect your opinion though, so thank you. Councilmember Brown, then uh, Executive Sidhu, and then Mr. Donovan. Yeah, I think I, I'm going to leverage off what Mr. Ellenbest just said. Um, it sounds like there's an, it sounds like some of us are advocating for for guys to have okay training as opposed to the best training we can give them. Um, there's lots of precedents of jobs where you get paid to train. I mean, the military is a classic example. You can get trained all the way up to f fly fighter aircraft and then get a really nice job working for a commercial airline when you retire using your pilot skills. I, there's, there's plenty of precedent for doing this. Yeah, I got paid all the schooling I went through in the Navy. They paid me to do it. Mr. Mr. Executive. Yes, I think if you're talking 
if we're talking about matter of policy, I think all trade schools should be free. I mean, this is the backbone of our economy and we are loading young people with $200,000, $300,000 debt before they even start. And we say they can't buy even a house. I think the whole thing is turned upside down. Education should not be for profit business, period. I think that we have doctors coming out with half a million dollar debt on it. We have engineers, we have people who don't want to go to master's degree. You know, if you go in universities, 67% of the people in graduate programs are non-Americans. This is the state of affair in our country, that we are burdening our own kids with hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars to get education. This, you know, the gestation period of this thing is 25 to 30 years. That's when we will realize, we're already starting to realize that we are not able to support our higher education, our technology, why we have 500,000 H-1 visas. And companies say we can't find trained Americans and we have to import people, 500,000 people. And these are the jobs which are $250,000 uh, job uh, wages. So I think this whole thing is rigged wrong we should have, especially technical education, it should be free. I, we're talking about policy. I'm not talking about Whatcom County. Mr. Donovan. I was going to put that as a goal in our budget thing there, Mr. Sidhu. Free education for everyone in the country. No, I just wanted to kind of make clear other something Mr. Bird said <clears throat> about a long waiting list. I mean, the, this is training our people who are already working as our ems folks so if, if there is a waiting list it's it's our people seeking that training we're not um just just not all, all serving everybody who's seeking that kind of training mr ellen boss and then mr bird uh, Count, council member donovan likes to tell people that i'm anti-government um i'm not anti-government i i feel like there's certain things that as a county government, we should provide and highly trained EMS um, folks is high on my list of priorities. So yeah, I, I really, I really think we should fund this. Anti-regulatory government. I'll, I'll... Mr. Bird, then Ms. Frazee, then Mr. Brown. Yeah, um, exactly. I, I agree with our higher education system is flawed right now as a model and it is far too expensive and we should be doing something there to make it more affordable and if that's something you'd like to, to see if we could work on it I'd, I'd be all for it um in regards though i also i want to address councilmember brown rod i mean the way you frame that it's taking what i'm saying and, and what i'm intending to say completely out of context and it's making it something political and I'd ask you not to do that because it's, it's not genuine. What I'm trying to say has nothing to do with the level of training or having subpar people working for us. And that's, that's not even remotely close to what I was trying to suggest um, or asking for. So let me be specific so that I can make sure that I'm, I'm clear with everyone. I just don't like paying someone a full salary to go to school paying for their full tuition to attend the school. And then when they come back day one, giving them a pay increase for doing that. Especially when, what I believe I heard earlier from Mike was that the average salary was 107,000 a year. That's a substantial amount of money they're making already. And to get a three to 5% increase on top of that, because we've paid for your education and your time, and you haven't made any investment of your own, I just think that that's a little bit of a flawed model. And I would like to see them also have an investment in that. So whether that is taking the class on their own time, whether that's paying a part of the tuition, or whether that is postponing the raise until the county recoups back some of the investment that they made in the training program, 
it, it allows us to have a more equitable relationship as far as that investment goes. But I'm very supportive of having a training program available. And it sounds like it, our firefighters and those individuals are lining up to take it. And I understand that it's not from outside the community, that it is internal, but that also tells me that it's not a recruiting tool that we're leveraging to bring other qualified people in from outside the area to get jobs here as well. So I get that. I just want to see that it's a more scalable, equitable relationship between the taxpayers and, and the staff. Governor Frazee, I think you were next. Yes, first, first of all, um, they, if they're going to be trained here, we know that the great training they're going to get. And I believe Mike Hilly said that they have to commit to five years after the training, they commit to five years of staying here on the force. So I think that type of commitment is important. And I, I agree with uh, Council Member Ellenboss that, you know, we want the best. When, when, when you're calling for your child, you know, you want the best. And we know if they're trained here, we know who's training them, we know what type of training they're getting. And I want them to be in our community. So I want to invest in that. Mr. Brown? Uh, I think the, the problem with, with the way this conversation is being split is that it, it sounds like the person getting trained accrues all the benefit and we're, and we're paying the cost and that's not fair. And then they're getting on top of that, they're getting a bump up in their salary. The, the, the truth is the community accrues the benefit in both the quality, the response that these guys can give in an emergency, but also frankly, in the reduction in liability. If you have a person who's, who's deeply trained in any area, whether it's an EMT or a police officer or a corrections deputy or, or whatever the case would be, prof professional engineer for public works, the training ends up reducing your liability as a community, which ends up saving the community money and obviously heartache and human suffering. So depending on the, on the situation. So I, I think we win when anybody steps up and says, I want to be better trained at my job when I'm representing the county, we all win. Mr. Ellenbos. Yeah, maybe we need to just vote. My comment probably isn't incredibly helpful, but I was just gonna offer if council member Berg thinks that $107,000 is a ridiculous salary for someone doing that job, I'll help him find some bunker gear and he can respond to a few calls and we'll see how he feels after that. I would recommend if anyone that hasn't done it to do a ride along with EMS. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty instructional and it's pretty eye opening. Anything else, Mr. Brown? Yeah, I'm sorry. I just want to play off what you just said. I did do a ride along and, and watch these guys walk into um, one of the big box stores have a guy sitting there saying, you know, I just don't feel quite right. I don't know what's wrong. And then he literally keels over in front of us. He's, he's effectively dead. And they incubate him and they bring him into the hospital. And the guy's walking around. Up, I mean, he's walking around now, but those guys knew exactly what to do. They could do it quickly. They could do it better than the guys in the ER room. I mean, there's a guy who's walking around because the guys are properly trained. Anything else? Okay, let's vote. Tyler Bird? No. Todd Donovan? Yes. Ben Ellenboss? I'll vote yes for you. Carol Tyler. Frazee? Yes. Kathy Kirshner? Yes. Red Brown? Yes. Barry Buchanan? Yes. That passes six to one with Councilmember Bird opposed. Next item is AB 2020-319 to request authorization for the county executive to enter into an interlocal agreement between Whatcom County and North Whatcom Fire Authority to cover the cost for students to attend the paramedic training program in the amount of 206,000. It's pages 375 through 386 in your packet. And that was also approved in committee two one with Councilmember 
Kirshner and Brown in favor and council member for opposed. I move for approval. Discussion on this motion. Okay, please call the roll. Todd Donovan? Yes. Ben Ellenboss? Yes. Carol Frazee? Yes. Kathy Kirshner? Yes. Rudd Brown? Yes. Barry Buchanan? Yes. Tyler Bird? No. Passes six to one with Councilmember Bird opposed. The next item is AB 2020-320. Request authorization for the county executive to enter into an interlocal agreement between Whatcom County and Bellingham Fire Department to cover the cost for students to attend the paramedic training program, including class administration costs and supplies in the amount of $642,503.07. Pages 387 through 398. And that was approved in committee to one with council member Kirshner and Brown in favor and council member Bird opposed. And I move for approval. Okay, Mr. Ellenbos, discussion. Like 106? No way, those guys make way too much money. We can't pay for them to go to school. Any other uh, pertinent discussion? Seeing none, let's vote. Ben Ellenboss? Uh, yeah, yes. Carol Frazee? Yes. Kathy Kirshner? Yes. Rudd Brown? Yes. Barry Buchanan? Yes. Tyler Bird? No. Todd Donovan? Yes. That passes six to one with Councilmember Bird opposed. I'm working on snarky jokes, Ben. Somebody uh, give me some time. Next item is AB 2020-321, request authorization for the county executive to enter into an interlocal agreement between agreement amendment between Whatcom County and the city of Bellingham to extend the current Whatcom agreement through 1231 of 2023. It's pages 399 through four, three in your packet, and that was Approved in committee three zero. I move for approval. Okay, we have that motion. Any discussion? Okay, please call the roll. Carol Frazee? Yes. Kathy Kirshner? Yes. Red Brown? Yes. Barry Buchanan? Yes. Tyler Bird? Yes. Todd Donovan? Yes. Ben Ellenboss? Yes. Here, kitty kitty. You have to catch a meow right there. <laughs> Is that a farm cat, Ben? Not exactly a barn cat. I think my wife loves this cat more than me. I know how she feels. Okay, I think that is the end of finance, Tyler. I, I, you had your work cut out for you today. You had lots of reading to do. That was a marathon. Everyone did a good job. Thanks for sticking with it. Did, a, did an awesome job. Um, we have now, uh, we have other items from the Council Committee of the Whole, and it, it did not get into my script, but we have three motions that we need to consider out of executive uh, session. So council member Donovan, if you would be able to read those titles too, because I don't have them. Uh, and then and then uh, the motions as well. Okay, I got them. Uh, do you want me to do them individually or one at a time and vote or read all three of them and then vote? I, like, think, we need one? To, I think we need to do them one at a time. Okay, all right. Um, I hereby move to approve defense and indemnification of employee defendants named in Anderson as personal rep of the state of Kirk Paulus et al. versus Whatcom County et al. U.S. District Court, Western Washington, Washington, Western District of Washington, number 220-CV-01125. Do we have a second? Second. 
Okay, we have a motion and a second. Discussion? Okay, please call the roll. Kathy Kirshner? Yes. Rod Brown? Yes. Barry Buchanan? Yes. Tyler Bird? Yes. Todd Donovan? Yes. Ben Ellenboss? Yes. Carol Frazee? Yes. That passes unanimously. Okay. Uh, second one, I hereby move to approve defense and indemnification of employee defendants named in Martin Vargas versus Whatcom County Sheriff's Office at all, U.S. District Court for Western, Wa Western District, Washington, number 220-CV-00921JCC. Okay, we have that motion. Do we have a second? I will second. second. Okay, we have a motion and a second discussion. Okay, please call the roll. Red Brown? Yes. Gary Buchanan? Yes. Tyler Bird? Yes. Todd Donovan? Yes. Ben Ellenboss? Yes. Carol Frazee? Yes. Kathy Kirshner? Yes. That motion passes unanimously. Okay, the final motion coming out of executive session. I hereby move to approve defense and indemnification of employee and contractor defendants named in Donald Calvin v. Bill Elto, Wendy Jones, Dr. Andrews, Deputy Auden, Deputy Lloyd, Deputy Keeley, Deputy Sheroin et al. in U.S. District Court for Western District, Washington, number 220-CV-00866RSM-BAT. Okay, we have that motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, discussion? Please call the roll. Barry Buchanan? Yes. Tyler Bird? Yes. Todd Donovan? Yes. Ben Ellenboss? Yes. Carol Frazee? Yes. Kathy Kirshner? Yes. Red Brown? Yes. That motion passes unanimously. Next item is AB 2020-233, a resolution authorizing Whatcom County to enter into a 20-year communications tower lease agreement with Verizon Wireless for an existing tower site located at the Lookout Mountain Forest Reserve. It's the pleasure of the council. Mr. Bird. Yeah, I'm going to move approval for discussion. Uh, I'll wait and see if I get a second. But Second. Okay. So um, motion and a second. Mr. Bird. I thought we were waiting or looking to get information back on this regarding tower placement uh, of additional service lines and equipment and, and a couple other things. But uh, maybe Council Member Brown has. Uh, Mr. Brown. Yeah, uh, I believe we were all sent a letter from the um, person responsible, the EOC uh, Sheriff's Office, who's responsible for the new radio system. And their comment is they fully support it and they have no issues. And that, that addressed my questions. So. Any other discussion on the motion? It, yeah. Uh, did they address whether or not there was an option to add additional radio items to it? I, I didn't see that email or additional. Okay. I'm just looking now to see if I can find the email and I'll send it to you. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? You okay to vote, Tyler? Yeah, I mean, that was a, a nice to have, not a, a mandate. I was just I was hoping we could work it, but I'm good. Thank you. Okay, please call the roll. Tyler Bird? Yes. Todd Donovan? Yes. Ben Ellenboss? Yes. Carol Frazee? Yes. 
Kathy Kirshner? Yes. Rod Brown? Yes, and I'm sending that dollar. Barry Buchanan? Yes. Okay, that passes unanimously. Um, going to council appointments to boards, commissions, and committees and AB 2020-300, uh, appointment to the Homeless Strategies Work Group Special Populations Position. Applicant is Michael Barras. Mr. Brown? You're muted. I say you skipped over item 18. Was that intentional? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I was looking for that and I was going to bring it up and under other items, but yes, you're correct. I did skip over that. Let's go to that one because that's the one we had a, quite a discussion going. So this is AB 2020-334, resolution establishing county council budget goals and guidelines. Uh, we uh, had an ongoing discussion this afternoon and ran out of time, so we've moved it into tonight's meeting. So... And uh, Go ahead, Mr. Brown. Sorry, and I sent a, uh, an amended version, which I'd like to make a motion. I think if you had a motion for the for the resolution, if someone was going to do that, then I was going to make a motion to amend. Okay, we'll entertain that motion. So the discussion, I'll move approval of the resolution. Second. Okay, and we then, have a motion and a second. And um, now I'm going to make a motion to amend the resolution. Okay. And my motion to amend it is in accordance with the email sent earlier today. Uh, I'm just trying to find it. Sorry. One from 348. Yeah, that's it. And I sent at 348, I sent also sent a PDF version that shows the mark changes that I was talking about. And my motion is to adopt the mark changes in my amended document. Councilor uh, Brown, would there be a way you could read that into the record since the public can't see any of that? That's probably a good point. So in attachment A, under item one, there was council supporting goals. And I propose that of the first of the two sentences, that the, that the first sentence be changed to read, preserve and expand programs which will increase the number of students ready to enter kindergarten. Um, you want to do this one by one or not? Do you um, want to vote on these one by one or not? Uh, that's up to you. If Kathy can share the screen, I have it up and I can just share the screen so people can read it on the screen if that works easier. I think we still have to read it in the record anyway, but that's fine as well. So I'll, re I'll read them all on the record and let you decide. Second one is under item two, council supporting goals. First, first of the two goals was changed to read, prepare a biannual budget for 21-22, which includes a supplemental budget reflecting a decrease in revenues of 10% and plans for a possible reduction of 20%. And then under item four, council supporting goals, two, two sentences. The first of the two sentences was changed to read, prepare a biannual budget for 21-22, which includes a supplemental budget reflecting a decrease in revenues of 10% and plans for a possible reduction of 20%. And then item five, council supporting goal, one goal, change to focus county government expenditures in ways which reduce county unemployment. And then under goal six, council supporting goals, one goal, Identify policies and processes to encourage a balanced and affordable housing market with monthly sales inventory MSI between five and seven months and a vacancy rate between five and seven percent. And then uh, item seven is to change the overarching goal to read prepare an addendum for the general fund and other funds reliant on general fund transfers that include a prioritized targeted list of cost reduction proposals, totaling 10% and plans for possible reduction of 20% of the unrestricted revenue. 
And then the next one, or the final one, was council supporting goal under seven, preparing a, a biannual budget for 21-22, which includes a supplemental reflecting a decrease in revenues of 10% and plans for a possible reduction of 20%. Okay, if we get a second, we can discuss this. I'll okay. second. Okay, Mr. Donovan, second, and you've had your hand up for a while, yeah. so go ahead. So I'm at, I'm at question for Mr. Brown, and I, I, I like what you're doing here. Um, why would you make the changes in the amendments, but not in the be it resolved goals section as the original language? That's an oversight on my part, nothing intentional. We, would you be willing to Put the same language in the the main document under yes the, yes that, that would that would be appropriate mr ellenbach i gotta say i like the 10 percent um with a plan for 20 i like that part of it but i i also like i like the um specifics that both carol and tyler had in there around the other things so do we want to vote on each change singularly or do you want an all or nothing approach? That would I be up to the maker of the motion. I, I, I don't have a I don't have a problem either way. If you want to, if you want to bifurcate them, I'm not going to object. Ms. Kirchner? Uh, actually, Ms. Fr say. actually, I'm sorry, Miss Frazee was next. I, oh, I, okay. I caught her in. Yeah, um, Brad, I looked over in our short dinner, our 20 minute dinner there. Um, and I do like the wording we used. When I, when I did propose attachment A, um, attachment A is the executive's goals with our goals that we came up with underneath. I was hoping that it would maybe a kumbaya moment of, you know, because we're so split on this. And if, if this would help us to all agree on these goals, I would be open to looking at these suggestions. And also if we want to bring, then if the council as a council, we want to be more specific and go forward with those, those be our individual goals for policy. And maybe this is what you've been trying, everyone's been trying to say this whole time is, you know, for policy and not the budget. Um, because I would like, if we're going to have goals as a council, I would like us all to agree on them. And if individually as a council, we can agree on those other pie in the sky goals. Um, I would like to try to shoot for those, but it seems like we're split because I don't know if, you know, I don't know if the council or the executive or someone is going to be accountable for this. But I, but I, I mean, the reason I brought, I put the attachment A is so we could find like, hey, these are working together. These are the executive's goals. These are our goals that we came up with. And this is what it looks like together. And I thought we'd have more of a, like I said, a coming together and agreeing. But I think we all, I, I would like us all to be on the same page if we're going to have council goals. And, you know, Council Member Bird, I don't know if you're open to changing some of these just so that we can agree on them and then maybe a separate document for, our policy, I, I, I'm open to different suggestions, but I, w I do want pie in the sky goals, but I also want us as a council to agree on things going forward, so. Council Member Kirchner. Uh, I was gonna agree with Council Member Ellen Boss that I like having the specifics and I'll, I'll just equate this to another goal that the county has, and that is to preserve 100,000 acres of farmland. Um, if we take out the 100,000 acres and we just say preserve farmland, what does that mean? Um, it doesn't really mean anything. So um, I, I appreciate Council Member Brown's efforts to 
um, take out any specific targets here. Um, but regardless of what the whole council decides to do, um, the original goals that we agreed to over the course of the last two months are going to be my goals that I continue to make decisions about and base my base my decisions on going forward. And um, I plan to measure my performance um, against those specific goals. So, Mr. Brown, and then Mr. Donovan. So, well, I'd love to achieve the goals as as originally proposed. I absolutely would, but. To, to put it on the shoulders of the of the county executive to achieve those goals, but provide no funding, I think it's just unreasonable. In the case of the example of the 100,000 acres of farmland, which I support, it doesn't have a deadline on it because it also doesn't have a funding mechanism associated with it. It's saying we want to do this and we'll work towards this, but there's no time frame on it. So. If you're going to put a time frame on it, you have to put the funding as well. And that's that's one of my fundamental problems of the way it's written. I don't want him, I don't want the executive and his staff to walk into this process knowing I just can't do that. I just know I'm going to fail because there's no funding. Mr. Donovan. Oh, two things. I'll kind of reiterate some things I guess I said this afternoon is I, I, I think we all agree on these goals. We want to reduce unemployment. We want to have more affordable housing. We want more kids in kindergarten. Um, and we believe in that. Um, but the idea of having budget instructions, which is already kind of too late because the budget's gone out to departments or, or budget goals um, that are that concrete and so far removed from what we're actually going to be doing with the budget um i just i can't look someone in the eye and say like hey you know here's our budget goals we're going to plan for 10 or 20 percent um, reduction in spending and we're gonna like somehow get this many more kids in kindergarten by this year or get this unemployment rate that we had back in september that we had no business taking credit for but now we will take credit for it in the future and so you know, i guess I, that's a fundamental disconnect for me. It's like we, we have we have we're fixating on these numbers and dates rather than okay well you know what are the actual policies we want to do and we, we've been working on this since may 26 and we really haven't talked about the budget because we're looking for this kumbaya moment when we're not gonna have one the, 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 i mean we should there's a lot of really tough choices we have different value sets and i think we're kind of bearing that ignoring it but I'd like, you know, but I'd like to get at least get something here. But I, I think um, the second thing is Ms. Kirshner's you know, bring up the hundred thousand acres things. Like, yeah, that's a metric, but we've got all these policies behind it. We've got, you know, soil overlay policies. We've got the purchase of development right policies. We've got land use policies. So we're, you know, we, we're like, we need to have those policy discussions. Um, but it would, we could put 100,000 acres, guaranteeing 100,000 acres of farmland in a in a budget document like this as a goal. I, I just, it would be about as meaningful as, as some of these metrics, if you call them metrics or quantified quantified numbers here. So I'd really hope we could just like, you know, we agree on lower unemployment. We want to move towards that. We agree on more kids in kindergarten. We agree on more affordable housing. Um, and we're like, kind of running around in circles about putting numbers on these and and, and that that's that's what i guess what's really fundamentally hard for me we, we in this you know but we, we could keep adding more numbers into that mr bird was saying that this afternoon you're like you know, like there's all these other numbers we could throw in there um but i just don't think that's really uh, us communicating to the public you know all these aspirations but like the real hard work where we have very different values about these things that's called budgeting. Um, we just haven't, we've ignored that since the beginning of this discussion. I think we lost some time because of that. Councilmember Member Frazee. Uh, Council Member Donovan, I think when we talk, when you say we have different value sets, I, be I believe we all can agree that these would be a goal. I, I, or at least maybe not the numbers aren't the goal. But I believe, believe, like we said before, I think we all believe that we want affordable housing for people in the community. We want 100%, um, like uh, I think it was 
council member Ellenbaugh said, kids ready for kindergarten if we could. I think we all have these values, but how we get there is going to be different. I, I guess I thought putting these pie in the sky goals out there, we could all do that, but maybe, maybe that's a separate, uh, let's see, resolution where that's our councils. Maybe we can agree on policy and, and uh, policy goals. Maybe there are policy goals and then we don't have that argument again. So I, I do like what uh, council member Brown brought forward with his changes, if we could all agree on that. And, and I know um, if we're bringing it forward as a council, I would, I would like us all to agree if that's possible. Mr. Brown. I just want to be clear. I, I would be willing to agree with these dates and these numbers if they came with a corresponding source of revenue and uh, evidence that that revenue is adequate to achieve the goal. Um, part of what we're going to have to do as a council is work with the executive. If we want to achieve these goals is first work with the executive to find the revenue sources that will help achieve those goals. And if we can do that, then I'm happy to come back at a later date and revisit this and say, hey, we found $100 million. Let's do it for X. We think we can increase the housing supply or increase early child child care or childhood development. I'm all in, I'm all on that, but I just want to be realistic. Mr. Bird. Thanks. Um, most of these conversations we've had have been in, in committee meetings, and, and there's probably people who are watching now that haven't watched any of those meetings and have no idea what the past conversations have been. And, and this is kind of their, their first take on that. Um, so I'm going to say some things that I've said before so that people understand that portion of the context. But um, one of those is that I don't believe that you create a budget for something and then establish a goal. I don't believe that I say, hey, I'm going to spend $50,000 traveling. And then I decide that I want to travel and where I want to go and when I want to go there. Instead, I say, hey, I, I want to take my wife to Europe for two weeks for our 10th anniversary on April of 2018. And it's going to be for a two-week period. And then once I know what my goal is and I know the time frame I have to achieve that goal, then I get to planning and budgeting around that so that, that I can achieve that goal. It, to do it the other way around, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't work. There, there's no structure there. I mean, it's not a process that we, we've ever taken. And I very much want to get to that point with us all. And I very much want to have those conversations about the budget, but we're stuck on this right now and this conversation about, hey, well, we need the money to be able to prioritize these and make them goals. Well, let's agree on these as goals and let's get into the money part. Let's stop like bashing and arguing that we don't have the money for these goals and actually decide that we're going to try and shoot for them and achieve them. And then let's start figuring out how we're going to do it. Every time we meet, we have a conversation regarding additional funding that's coming in or prioritizing funding requests and expenditure requests about prioritizing what programs we may have to cut if it's a 20% cut or a 10% cut about prioritizing how we're going to adjust revenue or what program we're going to add to the system, how we're going to address community needs. We don't have any clear way that we go about that other than arguing them out every single time. And every time we have a conversation about even a specific item that staff brings in front of us, if it leaves and comes back to us, oftentimes what we've asked for changes. And that's not one council member or two council members. Oftentimes the whole conversation changes and the whole paradigm changes. And we leave staff and, and community members looking at our conversation saying, well, what is it that they're trying to achieve? What is it that they want to do? Why do they want to do that? If I'm gonna bring something to them, how are they gonna make a decision about whether they should do it or not? What information should I be including in that packet 
so that when they get it, they have the answers that they need versus postponing it and kicking it out two weeks or four weeks until there's a presentation or, or that additional information is brought. Us going through this process and saying, here's what we're trying to achieve for our community, and here's how we're going to make those decisions, gives that clarity to those people doing that hard work of deciding what programs are internal to their department and what information that they're going to get and present to us. It also gives the information to our community so that they know what we're trying to achieve and, and where we're trying to go. I don't believe that these are pie in the sky goals. I believe that they might be a little bit difficult given what we're facing, but I 100% believe they're, they're absolutely achievable. There, there's absolutely no reason that we shouldn't be able to get back under 5%. And when Councilmember Donovan points out that we have the worst vacancy rate in the entire state of Washington, it's hard for me to believe that that's not based on decisions we as local elected officials that run all of the policy and budget decisions that our county sees and that our land use policies run by isn't affecting that, that it's something else that's causing that. And so we absolutely have the ability to control these things or at the very least impact these things. And by deciding on the goals right now and then getting into the budgeting and the planning but knowing the metrics and the targets we're shooting for and the timeframes we want to achieve it in, that's what's going to allow us to actually do those other things well so that we can achieve these goals. Otherwise, we're going to continue to have this same kind of conversation, just about other little pieces of items as they come forward. It, there's a couple of things, Councilmember Brown, if you want to add in the 10% portion to the budget, I, I, I'm all for it. The, the reason I was okay with not including it originally is because I respected some comments from the council that that might be overly burdensome and asking for too much work of, of staff in a short period of time. If the council as a whole says now that, hey, we feel like that's more appropriate and we would like to have those two, then I'm happy to change that. What I don't want to do though, is get rid of all of the data points. I don't want to get rid of the time frames. I don't want to get rid of the words like achieve, because to me, what that gets rid of is the clarity, it gets rid of the focus, and it gets rid of the accountability from us. At the end of the day, then it's just a matter of like, yeah, we tried, we didn't do anything, or we're still working on it. There's no definition around it. There's nothing there. I want to be accountable to my community for what I ran on and what they elected me on. And they elected me to help them with creating jobs. They elected me to help them better the housing market so they can afford to live here and their kids can afford to live here. I believe that they helped or they elected me to help them with their kids and getting them into programs and schools so that they are prepared in their, for their education moving forward. They, I think these goals are the reasons that the people here voted for us. And quite frankly, Regardless of whether we pass this or not, regardless of whether we succeed or we don't with this, I'll be proud to stand in front of anyone at any point in the future and say, hey, at least I tried. I listened to what you told me. I listened to why you voted for me. And I gave it the best shot that I possibly could. And I apologize that it didn't work out. But you know what? It was worth a shot. And now we know. I don't want to go the other way and see another year where we just kind of flounder and fight about things or spend another three months where we're hashing out the goals and how to change them. So it, versus just really getting into it and working on them. So I'll ask you again, I mean, I know it's different. I know you've never done it before. I, I know that you've never seen any other government group or entity or organization or legislative body do this before, but why not give it a shot? What's it gonna hurt us? Mr. Brown. Oh, what I have done before is, you know, run a, a, a sat down with a, a large group of people and worked out the, the goal. Sorry, my camera's not working properly for some reason. Um, yeah, the first part is to come up with a vision of what you want. I, we, you know, if you're in business, you say, I want to do this. I, I want to expand into Europe, or I want to double our sales, or I want to do whatever, you know, come up with a new product line or 
whatever the case would be, you work out what that goal is and that's fine. And I think what we've done in this document is said, this is what our goals are. Well, that's frankly the easy part is to throw, is to throw the, the sort of these, these things in and say, this is what we want to be. The hard part is then saying, and how do we make it happen? And what we're saying in this document is we want, we want this, we want unemployment down to 5% within a couple of years, but we're not doing the heavy lifting about working out how that happens. We're making that somebody else's problem. That's the executive's problem. That's the staff's problem. We're just happy to say to our constituents, hey, we made this a priority. Or we sorry, sorry, we didn't actually make it a priority. We made it a, a goal, but then we walked away and got up away from the table because we'd done our work. It's now somebody else's. I, it's not the way I operate. I won't. That to me is not leadership and it's not policy. Councilmember Allen Boss. I've, I've really been surprised by the opposition to setting um, a specific goal, um, especially for me, Council Member Brown, because it, it seems like for me, um, in anything I've ever been involved with where we've been successful, uh, we had specific goals in mind. Um, you know, when I graduated from high school, I could bench like 315 pounds, and that was probably more than 99% of the population. And if I would have just said, hey, uh, I want to increase my bench press while I'm in college, and I put 10 or 15 pounds on it, I would have been successful. But I set a specific goal of 400, and I got there. And so and that, I think, is a good thing. And uh, in business, um, you know, we want to increase revenue. Or do you say, no, I want to increase revenue by this amount? I mean, when we're, we're putting a specific number on the decrease in budget that we want. I don't understand why it's so um, controversial to set a specific goal for some of these other things that we can all agree on. So um, like I said, I really like your 10 and then have have the idea for 20. I, I'm, I'm just struggling with what the opposition is to having specific goals. And maybe it's just my background in sports that I think that that's kind of normal and maybe I, I mean I see Carol wondering the same thing like what's uh, yeah I don't, I don't really understand the opposition to the specifics I mean if we don't hit it at least we know how close we came and what we need to do to adjust in proportion in the future um, just saying increase or decrease that doesn't help much moving forward either Executives to do. Uh, let me let me frame it another way, uh, Mr. Allen Bass. Uh, what you are saying is is that that you wanted to achieve that. You had the resources and you had that limit. If you say the same thing, instead of three hundred ten pounds, you want to do six hundred ten pounds your variables will be different. 310 to 350 is doable. I think it depends on the, the goals we are setting. They are not entirely in our hand. Why I say that is there are many more variables which are not in our control, which control the unemployment rate. There are many other variables which are not in our control which uh, uh, increase the number of housing or lower the housing prices. If we do not pay attention to that and we set that goal, 610 pound press, then, then we are not doing a, a good job. Let, let me put it in a little different way. You know, there are two things. There is a process and process leads to a consequence. Right? I mean, you guys understand that concept, right? You follow a process, it will lead to a predetermined consequence. If you want flowers in your garden, you don't just think about flowers. What do you think about is, you think about the dirt, you think about water, you think about seeds, you think about sunshine, you think about waiting for it, you think about loving, tender care. 
and with that time the flowers will come we are not paying attention to the dirt to the water where the dirt is going to come from where the seeds going to come from where the sunshine is going to come from but we want flowers and we say well what's wrong with having a goal for her? i want a garden of flowers what's wrong with that there is nothing wrong with that having flowers and if you say okay go have flowers but seeds i don't know dirt i don't know water i don't know we, we that's what i'm trying to say i'm not really opposing the goals i'm not really opposing the specifics everything but we are making assumptions that changing the unemployment rate is in the hands of the county yes we can influence it our influence if i i want to put a number on it our influence is less than 10% on the overall unemployment rate in our county of 200000 people and our economy our county budget of 200 million dollars that's all is in our hands but we have a bigger tool we have a bigger tool is that we are control of our policy and that is also limited because of gma because of the state other state regulations because of the other seven cities in our county because of all the current uh, comp plan and current restrictions current uh, everything on our environmental regulations and everything but i think that when i talk about the dirt and the water and the sunshine those are the things which is in the hands of the county is the policy and 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 we keep harping on that let's just get to 5% how are you going to if if you define that and what would you measure accountability we just talked about accountability what is the accountability of changing the policies and what is the accountability of implementing that policies the administration this is not about satpal this is not about this is about the county administration the county administration is that you make a policy and we follow that policy but if you don't make a policy and 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 how we can do that oh now the other measurement the reverse measurement is you make a policy and administration refuses to follow the policy that's the things we need to measure i think you need to put those standards on to yourself as a council combined council that these are the four policies we will change which will impact and now you go implement those policies we haven't even talked about it when we got the report from the business and commerce committee they asked seven things and we knew right away is that half of those most of the things they they uh, they proposed they were related to city of bellingham 80% of them were related to city of bellingham so how are we going to impact that i i just I, i'm not really arguing against the setting goals i'm actually pleased that council is engaged and want to do these things but, but until you take care of the the sunshine and the dirt and the water and and have a patience flowers won't come if we already know it's a pie in sky are we going to just let's wish for flowers and see if they happen or not i can tell you most likely it won't happen you throw a seed and go away come back after 6 months say how is my crop doing it doesn't happen that way you got to work on the dirt every day and then there could be a hail and the crop is 10 days before harvesting so i think that you know i i want you guys to be practical Uh, okay, anyways, I will stop here. Councilor Bird. Thanks. Um, you know, if, if I was to, if I, to address your analogy of flowers, if I don't know that my goal is to plant and grow flowers, then I don't know that I need to go and work on the sun and the soil and the rain. And if I don't know that your goal is to grow flowers, then I might bring you hail or snow, thinking that I'm helping out. not understanding what you're trying to achieve. And so 
you know, I'm sitting here and I'm listening to us have this conversation uh, for I don't know what what count number of time, and, and I'm wondering if I'm not finally having a, another epiphany on this. I keep hearing this argument that we're deciding this and we're going to give it to you and it's your responsibility to go do it and that we're not budgeting anything we're not creating any policies or we're not creating any plans to address it we're just turning it over to you and staff and expecting you to do it and, and that's the wrong thing to do and i 100 percent agree with that and my epiphany is i think that the reason that you i keep hearing that argument from us is because that's the way we've done everything forever i mean Everything I can remember on voting on has been something where it's been brought to us and we approve it and we don't look at it again. It's like today, the conversations we had with finance items, I mean, with the data points or what's included in the programs when they come back to us. We send it off to staff, we say, get it done. And we never actually take the time to actually come back to those policies or those metrics to figure out if it's working, if it's achieving what we intended it to, why did we put it in place in the, in the beginning? Has it run its lifespan and we should be doing something different or anything else? And so historically, our, our policy and our process is what you're worried about, is that we do the same thing that we've always done at the end of the day. But what I'm telling you and what I'm asking you to do after we approve this is to not do that. It's to actually work together to figure out the policy and the budgets in order to achieve those goals. To be able to use this document like it reads on the whereas as a guideline and as a tool to collaborate with other municipalities so that we can say here's what we're trying to achieve so that when we work together on this in our local agreement you know what we want to do and maybe you can help us get there or to contractors and nonprofit organizations so that when we hire them and give them grant money or have them come in to do a service contract for us we can say here's what we're trying to achieve our big vision and here's how we make decisions. And this is what's important to us. And so we want you to know that in case maybe there's something that you could help out with, but no obligation. It's so that we as a council can actually make decisions on what things we're going to do and how we're going to prioritize funding and not give it to you walk away and expect you to go do it on your own, but to actually have something that we're working on together in conjunction with you as the executive to accomplish it. it. I very much want to do that. And there's tons of ideas. And we've been talking about them amongst some of the other council members to start getting that ball rolling. And I want to get there. Just let's get past the argument about whether we should have goals or not. Let's decide to do something different and unique and take the step forward to have it done. We'll do the hard work. You want to meet every week in August during our summer break? I'm there. Let's do it. I got an entire list of things. And I've talked to other council members who I know have things as well that are interesting that we should look at. And I'm sure, I'm certain that staff members have things that we could look at too. And that community members, we've been getting emails now asking from community members if we'll put up a website like Bellingham did where they can suggest ideas and participate. We could do that and hear what their ideas are too and get them involved in helping us solve the problem. I don't see these as pie in the sky. Are they hard? Absolutely, especially given right now. But leadership's not taking the easy things. It's not giving it to someone else to do. It's taking the hard things and stepping up to do them. And I'll be honest, the hardest thing that we're gonna have to do isn't these goals. It's going to be these conversations and it's going to be working together and hearing each other and being willing to do that. That's, that's been our biggest struggle the entire time I've been here. But I, I still don't think that that one is even a pie in the sky goal that we can't get around. So again, I'll, I'll ask you, uh, give it a shot. Let's see what comes from it. I think it'll be a lot of good things. Mr. Donovan. Oh, uh, let Mr. Sidhu respond. Mr. Sidhu. Uh, okay. he, 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 here's what I'm saying. You want to put a goal, okay, you, you, you vested in there, but I think you got to do a little bit reverse thinking as well. What I'm saying is, why don't you, you doesn't mean Mr. Bird, you means the council. Why don't you 
make a goal that we will, within within next 12 months, that's all it long takes as long to change a policy. Okay? And, and I'm very aggressive with that. The next 12 months, we will make five changes in the policy which will lead to better employment. We will make five changes in our policy which will lead to uh, 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 increased housing. This is what I'm trying to say. That's where you need to work on. That's what is in our control. That, that council take a pledge that in next 12 months, by next July 1st or the July 30th, we would have changed five major changes in the policy, land use policy. We will make five major changes which impact our businesses. Then you put a goal. This is not the only chance you have because this budget is totally suppressed budget and you are trying to squeeze milk out of a stone right now. If you, you, you put this goal or nothing, next 12 months is going to be struggle no matter what goals you put in. What I'm saying is you should direct council, when you say you, means council. Council should direct their attention, your energies, what are the policies you will change? And next year again, even if we pass the budget now, council has whole authority anytime come back and put new goals on it. It's not that, oh my God, if we miss the chance, we miss two years. We don't miss even a month. Come January, after passing the budget, we get another $20 million. Who, what, what's going to happen? We're going to come to you. We're going to come to council. Hey, we got $20 million. What do you want to do with us? I think that the biggest the challenge with the council is, if you want to challenge the council, is you should make a, a plan. What would you change in the governance system? Other things will happen. Houses will come. Just saying we want to have 5% uh, uh, inventory of housing doesn't achieve anything. You, you should say we want to make five changes to the policy which will lead to housing, which will lead to better employment. That's all I'm arguing about. I'm not against goals, but goals next 12 months, it's going to take you 12 months just to think about what policies you can change, what in your hands, and what are the hurdles to change those policies. You would all know, you've been in this council for long enough, that it's not like you snap your finger and policy changes. Can I address that in 30 seconds? I don't know, can you? Yeah, I, I can. You know what? I think it's a great idea, and I really appreciate that that, that input. It, and I I think that would be a perfect thing for us to include. The goals are, are over a five year period, and that if we wanted to achieve those, we would absolutely have to do that. And if we agree on those, I'm willing to set that as our next steps. Is is absolutely five policy changes for housing and five policy changes for economic development, and do something similar for the rest of these because I do 100% believe that that you're spot on with that. And it would be helpful. Mr. Donovan. Thank you. A um, couple observations. Uh, we've been doing this since May. And by this, I mean this last half hour. Um, Mr. Bird started his speech at 829. Mr. Sadu had his response speeches that filled up most of the time. Nobody else has really spoken much. We've been doing this since May, and now we have this kind of we maybe have goals or we don't have goals and we're, we're, we're not budgeting. And, and since May, I've really not heard very many proposals. There were a few today that would actually be the stuff that's going to be hard to do. Um, Mr. Bird had said something about maybe affordable housing dollars being used for different ways to address housing issues. There's been discussion about getting rid of the parks department. There was a statement today about following through with some funding on something that was requested from the Business and Commerce Committee. There's been some, probably as much land use discussion as been budgeting discussion. Nothing has stopped a council member from bringing 
those concrete proposals. And I guess that's what I'm looking forward to because that we're that's when we're not going to agree, and that's what we need to be talking about. Um, but I mean, just think of the pace of this. Um, we've been doing this since May 26th, and um, we're avoiding budget discussions, and and we should be doing that. Um, whatever the goals are, are you know, there that's a resolution, whatever. But um, I think there's better use of our time. Mr. Brown. So. Um... I've just sent a third version, and I'm not going to read it in the record yet unless I get some sense that we're on the right track. But I've taken I've taken the, the hard goals that you put down in terms of I, I want to achieve a reduction in um, in unemployment. I want I want to see uh, an increase in housing availability, and I put them in the whereases because that's the that's the background of what we're trying to achieve, and they're pretty much the way they were originally drafted. But I think the key thing is here is under the therefore be it resolves, I've added a third, a, a final one, or a, next to final one, which says that the county council commits to working with the executive branch to identify the legislative solutions and sources of funding to support these budget goals. And I think that's important because I am not going to, I cannot buy into something where I say, Sir pal, you know, I, I really want this, and it's your problem to solve it. If I'm gonna, if I'm gonna hold Set Powell's feet to the fire, I'm putting my feet right next to his. And if he burns his feet, I will burn my feet. And that's the way. That's what leadership is to say. Okay, we will, we will do this together. We're not just gonna dump the dump the problem on somebody else's shoulders. So, if you can buy into that concept, where we say we say we're all in this together. We want this and we'll work as hard as you will. And if we fail, if you fail, said pal, it's because we failed with you. I, mean, I I can accept that. Mr. Ellenbach. I, I can appreciate, um, and I'm just gonna call it complaining. You're complaining, Council Member Donovan, about how, um, how long this has taken. But I just want to point out that um, as I'm counting votes here in my head, I think we probably could have rammed this through about two weeks ago if myself, Tyler, Kathy, and Carol all wanted to do it. But you continued to have concerns about the specifics, so we continue to hear you. And now all I hear is the concerns about the specifics, and we're still listening. Um, we could probably have just called for the vote in the committee meeting and it probably would have passed and quite frankly it probably still will pass so um i i i'm having a hard time looking i'm having a hard time looking in the mirror right now and and thinking that i'm holding anything up but i am listening so um but i'm not hearing anything different or a better solution uh, I still feel like the majority of the council like the idea of of um, having the specifics in there. And can I call the question on the uh, amendment? Uh, any council member can call a question at any time on a motion. Is that on the uh, the ten that was read in, adding ten, or or did we read them all in? The, the current motion on the floor is my motion to amend with all the changes that are read into the record. That's what's, that's what's on the floor. That's correct. That's the original motion, the original amendment that, that Council Member Brown made. Okay. Um, Mr. Elmbos, are you moving to uh, call the question? Yes. Do you have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second on Rudd's uh, to call the question. All those in favor of calling the question, uh, please call the roll. Ben Ellenbos? Yes. Carol Frazee? Is this, are we voting on Rudd's changes? Yes. It's calling the question. Call the question. The discussion. Oh, calling, calling the, the question. question. Calling, We're calling the, question. the question as to we will, if, the que if that passes, then we will go right yes. to voting on Rudd's Thank amendment. Thank you. Sorry, it's late. Yes, nine o'clock's late. Yeah. Kathy Kirshner? 
Yes. Red Brown? I guess so. Barry Buchanan? Yes. Tyler Bird? Okay. Todd Donovan? I guess so. Yes. Okay, we have tepidly uh, approved the motion to re not reconsider, but to uh, call the question. So that motion is now up for vote. Please call the roll again. Todd Donovan. So this would be to affirm Mr. Brown's amendment. That's correct. Yes. Ben Ellenboss. No. Carol Frazee. Yes. Kathy Kirshner. Which amendment are we affirming? The, la the latest amendment? But what I read into the read? record about three hours ago. Mm, yes. Rod Brown? Yes. Barry Buchanan? Yes. Tyler Bird? No. Okay, well, that passes uh, five to two. Uh, with Bird and Ellen Boss opposed. So Mr. Negative. Brown. You've got the main motion. Now we have the main motion on the uh, resolution as amended. Any further discussion on that? Okay, seeing none, please call the roll. Carol Frazee. Yes. Kathy Kirshner. No. Red Brown? Yes. Barry Buchanan? Yes. Tyler Bird? No. Todd Donovan? Yes. Ben Ellenboss? Yes. Okay, that passes five to two with Bird and Kirshner opposed. Okay, now we move on to council appointments to boards, commissions, and committees. Uh, AB 2020-300, appointment to the Homeless Strategies Work Group, special populations position. The applicant is uh, Michael Barras. Uh, does anyone want to nominate? Move to nominate. Second. We have a motion and a second to nominate. Uh, discussion. Okay, please call the roll. Kathy Kirshner? Yes. Fred Brown? Yes. Barry Buchanan? Yes. Tyler Bird? Yes. Todd Donovan? Yes. Ben Ellenboss? Yes. Carol Frazee? Yes. That uh, passes seven zero. Next up is introduction items for into uh, for our next meeting. Uh, we have three items. Sorry, we can't hear you. He froze. Tali, you better continue for. <laughs> Got half a berry there. Yep. The. Uh... Last item on our agenda tonight is introduction items, AB 2020-316, AB 2020-310, and AB 2020-308. Do we have a motion? So move. Second. And seconded. Any conversation or discussion? Okay. Seeing none, Kathy, would you call a vote? Red Brown? Yes. Barry Buchanan? Tyler Bird? Yes. Todd Donovan? Yes. Ben Ellenboss? Yes. Carol Frazee? Yes. Kathy Kirshner? No. Barry Buchanan? I'm sorry, I lost my internet there for a second, so I, I missed what happened. Is this We're a motion to, motion to introduce? Yeah. Yes. OK. Um, Yes. So that passes 6-1.
Okay, uh, we have one item that's kind of unique. It's called, we're calling it a special notification. It's AB 2020-332. Uh, if you remember two weeks ago, uh, we uh, approved sending a letter to the governor about uh, visitation to long-term facilities. And uh, we approved that. And tonight was just an acknowledgement out to the public that we did that. That was approved and sent. And the letter can be found on our legislature. Uh, center. Uh, it's in the public record. So that's it for that. Um, committee reports. Is there anything else that came out of any other committees today that we want to discuss? Finance. Is there anything else? You didn't have anything else, Carol? Um, just that we had a discussion or in, uh, sorry, public works and the health committee. We had a discussion regarding proposed resolution in the matter of the Whatcom County six-year transportation improvement program, which is DIP for the years 2021 and 20 to 2026. And they're going to, Public Works is going to bring forward um, the resolution in um, September. And we just have time to look over some of the things they're looking at and things that have been removed and, and uh, Yes, we have some time to think about it and ask questions. Thank you, Councilmember Frazee. Um, anything else from any of the committees that met today? Mr. Donovan? No, I don't have okay. to. Okay, we, uh, that gives us, brings us to other items. I, I promised that uh, since we had to cut our discussion short on uh, how we carry forward this budget discussion with goals, uh, forward, and uh, I'd like to do that now. And Mr. Bird, you were the one that was engaged in that conversation earlier, and so if you'd like to pick that up again, that'd be great. Um, I think you guys got to kind of know uh, what's it, what do you want. What would you like to do? Who you talk to? Everybody? Yeah, I mean, the, the council as a body. I mean, what do you guys want to do? Councilmember Frazee. I would like to hear what you've done in the past or how you proceeded in the past um, with the budget discussions. As far as me or, or the council or? Yes, as the as the council, since I was on the council the last time you went through the budget discussions and um, how you came up with goals and everything before, and yeah, I guess what people would like to do. Councilmember Kirshner. Well, I can take a stab at it since I've been through two cycles. Um, basically, what's going to happen now is. Executive to do has um, given instructions to all his department heads based on what he's heard us talking about for the last couple of months. They are working on their budgets, and sometime in October, we're going to get presented with the entire budget and we're going to be asked to approve it. So um, that's, that's how it'll work. And we'll go through uh, department heads will give a presentation generally on. Um, some small parts of their budgets that they um, want us to know about, but we don't do zero-based budgeting. So we're just going to hear about the changes that they're making from the 10% reduction that we've asked them to do. And then um, we'll talk about it and then we will either approve it or not. We'll probably approve it because, um, well, I'm going to go ahead and make a prediction that we will approve it. That's how it'll work. And now we've got these goals. Well, we sort of have goals and we can talk about those. Um, what, do you want to start with them? Would you like to start talking about our goals or should we wait until the executive gives us his budget? Councilmember Donovan. Um, yeah, follow up on that. Um, I, I, I agree with much of how Ms. Kirshner described that. Um, although um, 
my, this is my third budget, second, I don't know. Um, we didn't necessarily always approve the executive's um, budgets. Um, so I wouldn't say that sounds like a foregone conclusion. Sorry, Sapo. Um, but what we haven't done in the past, because yeah, we, we, I think we're gonna get it a little earlier than we have in the past. Um, but we're also we often get it so late that there isn't we even with extra meetings there's not much time for council to to, to change things. Um, we do the additional service requests kind of on response to the budget. That's what I think Kathy meant by yeah we don't do zero based budgeting. Um, what I think we can maybe do this different this time is um, council members can bring proposals to council about their ideas, you know, maybe crafted as an, not as an ordinance um, or even as a resolution, but, you know, some concrete proposals before October, before actually, I, I maybe um, the executive can give us a sense of when, when we'd be getting the budget, but um, it is early October is probably the earliest. Um, so I, I, I would, you know, and, and that, I didn't, I didn't mean to sound like I was complaining, Mr. Ellen Boss, um, about the, uh, the, the pace of this thing, but I think, it, you know that's it's on us to kind of put our cards on the table like what not just what our, our these goals are but like specifically going through programs and um don't wait for the executive to give us the complete budget but if you want to start discussions about um where we're going to get savings or where we're going to get revenues or what shouldn't be touched um I think everybody is free to bring those proposals to council, or, or, or even use the uh, was it the August twenty fifth day as a workshop to to maybe have those discussions. But but go in there having done you know some work about specific ideas. So that that'd be something different than we've done in the past. Yeah, because normally those council proposals come right at the end. Sometimes I mean, yeah, yeah. Like two, we got maybe one meeting to deal with them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what I was coming to too. Was the August twenty fifth, since we have that penciled in um, on our schedules as a potential day that we would meet. Um, do we want to continue this discussion in a workshop that day? Um, I think it would be the best day because staff is available to to staff the meeting, and we can't do it without them. So, uh, just throw that out there for your discussion. Mr. Donovan. Yeah, and, but I, I also hope that we can interact with staff if the executive is okay with that before the 25th to come up, you know, if, if we as a council or as council members have ideas about, you know, reductions and, 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 and goals, or I'm sorry, goals, priorities, um, things that a council member might think is important as something to be protected or not to be protected to, to, to you know let's just not start on the fly on the 25th but talk to um talk to the um subject area people staff people about about the programs we might be talking about funding or not funding mr schroeder did you have a oh yeah uh tyler here i was um going to suggest maybe that September 15th meeting would be the best time to come back to the kind of budget policies and, and priorities from council. Um, we'll have a lot more details by that point uh, to be able to kind of engage council council on, on where we're going with the ASRs and the budget reduction plans. And then kind of much more details and a proposal by early October. Um, the, Oct the August 25th meeting, I can't guarantee department heads and others will be available. I do know that a lot of staff have um, accomplished vacations and other things just based off of normal years on, and council breaks. Uh, so we were under the understanding or just idea that we would be bringing COVID related or, or CARES Act related contracts uh, that were needed to be prioritized for the August 25th. So I just don't want to kind of walk away with expectations that we would have a lot of staff available for a good budget policy discussion on the 25th. I do think we could have a lot more information and available uh, on September 15th. 
which is which is much well to, to a couple of council members points which is much earlier than we have in the past couple cycles and and i really like the idea of in, engaging some of the council um, thoughts um, early on so they can be incorporated instead of how maybe the last couple of years it's been after the budget has been presented and then there's kind of council items that have been established so that, that September 15th would be a good starting point for that discussion. Um, so just my just my thoughts on the process. Council thoughts on that? Um, yeah, and so we would still have that discussion before the budget formally was presented. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that'd be good. But I also, um, even if we didn't have staff fully available, if there was, if there were ideas that council members had that they wanted at least council to discuss that could potentially be done on the 25th as well. But I, I get that we would not have full access to staff. Mr. Executive. Yeah, I, I think that uh, this is what I actually promised before too, that we used to get budget like mid October to last week of October and November, we had to do this. So that's what I promised that we, we will bring it earlier, we'll share. So September 15 date is that you will know our format of our budget, major items and everything. It allows the council members to study, form their questions. And at the same time, it allows us uh, means department heads to finalize their details and things. So there may be some change between August 15 to October 15, but you will have the information a month earlier. Before that, we never saw anything what it looks like until October 15 or last. So our aim is that get out the information as is presentable uh, to the council members so they have ample time to study, ask questions, and uh, and formulate ideas, or you can have your internal discussions one to one, and uh, and we will support your your questions in 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 that meantime. But October fifteen, or 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 a week later, whatever we can then give you. Okay, this is our budget, and then we can have discussions in, in, in full earnest. Okay, what's the wishes of the council? Ms. Kirshner. Can I make a motion to adjourn? Yes. That's all, you can always do that. <laughs> That, that's, the highest prior, that's the highest priority motion there is. <laughs> well, we, we are have to on it now. <laughs> you are making a motion to adjourn. Yes. Do we have a second? I am. I'll second. All right. Okay. Motion is seconded. We have to vote on it. We can't discuss it. That's Harry the way it is. No. Tyler Bird. Yes. Todd Donovan. No. Ben Ellenbus. No, I guess. No. Carol Frazee. No, I guess. Kathy Kirshner? Yeah. Red Brown? I guess no. I guess we're not adjourned. So so let's let's figure out how we can get our arms around this though so we can adjourn. And I I would move that we uh, take this discussion back up in on September 15th, uh, as suggested by the administration. Second. So, we have a motion in a second. Discussion. Mr. Ellenboss. So 
after say eight o'clock, every time the executive speaks for longer than three minutes, can we each have a drink? You haven't been drinking this whole time? No. <laughs> apply that to all council members if they speak over three minutes. That's not fair. I'm in tea table. I want equal time. What's wrong with that? Okay, uh, none of that really sounded germane to the motion, but uh, any discussion on the motion to take it up on the September 15th? Seeing none, please call the roll. Tyler Bird. Yes. Todd Donovan? Yes. Ben Ellenboss? Yes. Carol Frazee? Yes. Kathy Kirshner? Yes. Red Brown? Yes. Gary Buchanan? Yes. Hallelujah. Okay, so uh, that passes seven to zero. Um, we're still on other items. Do we have any other items, Mr. Donovan? I never know if it's an other item or a council member update, but I have an update about the Lummi Ferry item. Should I? Go for it. Okay. Yeah, we had a, um, the Ferry Funding Work Group had a meeting recently. Um, and if you, they're gonna come do a presentation or LifeX is gonna come do a presentation um, in September. But if you recall, they had thought about asking council to pass a taxing district as part of the funding mechanism for this thing. That's off the table now. Um, there's a, a plan to try to apply for crab funding, um, the road funding. What's crab stand for? Anyway, the, the state road funding thing. Um, that's kind of on hold until we hear about how a build grant that's gone to the federal government might come through. Um, but the reason I want to throw this out there is if, if we don't, figure this out that this being how we fund this um boat by 2029 um these annual maintenance things that we're doing that cost maybe five hundred thousand dollars um the engines will completely need to be replaced at a cost of about 4.5 million dollars so this is the heads up um and we'll hear more about that in september and we might know more about the build grant by then Thanks, Todd. Any uh, any other other items or council member updates? Ms. Frazee. I just want to give an update. Um, I think um, Daniel Probst, uh, I, w I can't even remember the date. I think it was January. He came and talked about the uh, Bellingham to Mount Baker Trail um, that he's been trying to um, move forward. And we do need community and uh, tribe and um, some state people to get on board with it. Um, but I had a chance to run on the trail with him, uh, part of it. And it was just very eye-opening and all the history and how in the early 1900s, um, the races that were run there and just what it would bring for our community, for uh, the economy of Acme and all of the smaller, the smaller, uh, towns or cities around towns around uh, Whatcom County and I just want to keep that on our minds that that as we recover um, recreation is such a huge part of this community and I think that would bring a lot especially to the small towns um, in our area so if anyone gets a chance to either hike on it or run on it or whatever uh, just to get I feel um, Daniel would be glad to do that with you and, and tell you so much of the history and what it could do for our community. So I just want to update you on that. Did you cross the Ridley Creek thing? Yes, uh, we went on Ridley Creek up to the that building where you're hanging over the cliff sort of thing. Yeah, it was scary. <laughs> Mr. Ellenbach. Carol, did you set a goal when you left on your run? Did you want to, for a specific mileage you wanted to hit or a specific time or maybe calories that you wanted to burn on your run? Well, we all had to agree. There were three of us and we talked it over. And when we 
came to a consensus or most of us agreed, we decided to move onward and then turn around at a certain point. So thanks for asking though. Dan's goal, he's done that in what, like from downtown to the top and back in 38 hours or something like that, pretty fast. Yeah, he said when he got to the up to Mount Baker, he said, oh, the, him and his buddy just said, hey, that wasn't bad. Why don't we just go back as well? Any other council member updates? All right, folks. You have a good week, and we will see you later. We are adjourned. Bye, everybody. Bye.